service then. <laughs> uh, we have a new person who just jumped in. Hello, uh, Pepsar. Hello, hi. Hello. Uh, do you have something you want to add? Uh, yeah, I mainly wanted to talk about the death panel stuff because the, like you said, the Canada stuff about them just being like, oh, you're broke, you should just die is super duper incorrect. And, um, well, I, I have two sources. I have two sources. Let me link them because I have two sources. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Pep, sorry, go ahead. I'll make your point. Um, so I feel like a lot of the stuff that we've been hearing recently about, that, or at least what I've been hearing recently about, has been caused by the decision to allow mental health solely mental health to be a reason for people to request assisted suicide and i feel like a lot of people have problems with that because um a lot of people see mental health as like a temporary problem and assisted suicide as a permanent solution um but i feel like sometimes it's not sometimes this is like probably a little touchy and controversial but there are some people who their mental health issues are caused by like situational life issues that may not get better like they might be in like deep despair and poverty have like addiction things like that and certainly it would be great if the government had better like social support systems to uh, lift people up and get them out of those circumstances but i feel like it's the height of selfishness to ask those people to like stay in that situation and suffer and wait when we don't have that for them currently and we don't know when that will be and I feel like just because it feels icky to people to know that, like, potential life and hope has been lost, that I don't think that's a reason to force people to stay alive when they don't want to be. Uh, I would overall agree with you. Um, I, um, so are there any uh, limits there, right? So, like, I, I've, I've taken your... Oh, yeah, your... absolutely. Okay, go ahead. What are those limits? I feel like it should, anybody who is, like, seeking assisted suicide should absolutely be, like, seen by a doctor or a psychiatrist, like, at least have people vet it so it's not just, like, a, and I think there should also be a waiting period so that it's not just, like, an immediate, like, oh my god, my life sucks right now, I'm in a crisis, I can't take this anymore. I feel like that, immediate crises like that should be handled by, like, the appropriate services, obviously. Um, But there are people who have just, like, long protracted shitty lives that don't uh have a light at the end of the tunnel sometimes especially like given our like current the state of the world and the economy and things like that and like the mass like income stratification and things like that there are some people who it is a long road to get like out of where they are currently and sometimes there's no end to that road and i feel like yeah it feels bad for people to kill themselves but i i don't think that uh, yeah i think that they should be allowed to if they want to within reason uh I'll, i have some questions for you Bef before yeah. i i do d does anyone else uh want to jump in on this okay yeah I, I put my i put my um links in the vc chat so I, if, if you have time you can okay. read esperado did you want to say something no i'm good okay um yeah so uh when it comes to um yeah so why shouldn't uh we allow people to end their lives on their own recognizance right if you're putting a limit saying that well we need uh authorities to come in and, and check in on them um like why shouldn't people just be allowed to say you know what i'm done for whatever reason today happens to be the day and so i'm done that's actually a good question. I haven't really thought. I, I think personally, it's because to me, if there is hope and there is a potential to like resolve a problem for a person, then I think that like it, it, taking the time to evaluate whether their problems can be solved, I think that's important. Um, and sometimes when you're in a crisis, you're not thinking as much in that moment whether whether like, properly about whether how you can solve those problems and all the avenues you have access to. Um, but if you've spent, well, that's why I feel like it should it should be like a time-based thing. Like if you've spent a lot of time, you've tried all the things you could try. I feel like that's the, de the, the defining factor for me is if, if you can get out of this without killing yourself, that would be great. Uh, but if everybody, if they've exhausted their options, I think that's um, probably where I would, that's the distinction for me. Hmm. Um, uh, coconut. Uh, just give me one second, I'm trying to fix something. Yeah, let me check out this link too. Um, so uh while they're doing that, 
uh, yeah, when it comes to, um, uh, when it comes to, uh, deciding, uh, who can, uh, take their own life, I think it's actually a really interesting question. Oh, oh yeah, no, I didn't get to answer because I was a bit, um, I was thinking it over. Okay. And I couldn't really think of much other than, I guess, uh, idealism and morals, I guess. I think, you know, as, as someone who is Catholic, uh, you know, Christian, I believe that, you know, it's, it's immoral, uh, to, to, to commit suicide, I think. Um, but, and, you know, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Um, but, uh, I think it also, also is, you know, there's always a chance that things can get better, no matter how dark things seem. And so I think that people should try their best to, um, find a way to, uh, find purpose and, you know, try their best to survive and do what they can and see if things can, uh, get better for them with time. And, um, you know, that's what I would suggest, I think. Um, I think that I, I get what you're saying. I, I do feel like uh, from a moral standpoint, it can feel bad. And definitely from a religious standpoint, I'm not religious, so I don't have that um, as a factor in my like uh, view on this. But I do feel like even if you are religious, I think that it's still putting your feelings about something over about somebody else's choices over their autonomy. And we let people decide, like some people, when they have cancer, they can decide not to get uh, chemotherapy or radiation if they want to just live out like the rest of their days without going through like another round of like kind of a horrible process. And so if we well, yeah, and, that, choice, and that's, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah, there is a chance. That's totally fine. That's yeah. Totally, that's totally acceptable. So how's that different? So there's a chance there that they could survive, even if it's super remote. How is that different from people who have like, uh, like long protracted problems in their life weighing on them and that have caused mental health issues? How how are those two things different? Um, I guess. Well, it, well, it's, you know, it's the difference between I guess the passive and the active. I think that you know to take to take it into your own hands and uh, you know end your life, I think is immoral. But, you know, if you're at the end of your life, you know, you're like 65 and you say, oh, shit, I have stage four prostate cancer or, or breast cancer, whatever have you. And you say, you know what? I think I think I had a good run. I don't really want to, like, go through the chemotherapy. I heard it sucks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd rather just spend the last moments I have at home with or surrounded by family and just go out uh, like that. Um, that, that's totally fine. Cause you know, you're not killing yourself. You're just, you know, letting na nature take its course. Like literally. It's like, like a 30 year old, uh, man with like a wife and family and kids and stuff. And he can afford like all like the craziest, best, like top of the line, cutting edge cancer care and decides not to. And it's just like, no, I just, I'm going to let nature take its course. Well, then that's fine. Cause that's just nature taking its course. I mean, you know, he just. He just he just pulled like the the short strick in the genetic lottery, I guess, you know, to get cancer that young. But there's so much hope for for there's so much potential for that to be able to be resolved. Like, what if it's like only yeah, state, and right? I and I would hope and... that his friends and family were would help would help him uh, rouse the strength in him to mm -hmm. uh you know try and fight it. But you know sometimes you you know you can't, and I understand that sometimes it's very hard. And so if he decides, you know, what, I'm gonna let nature take its course because I don't want to do the chemotherapy. It kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of painful. I don't feel that way. I think that's nature taking its course, which is different than just saying, you know what, just kill me now. Um, I guess I so kinda, I if you look at it kind of like uh, nature being a a force that you can't really contend with without great resources and and like time and effort that not everybody has available to them. Um, then can you consider that the same kind of to have the same kind of impact as somebody who like is homeless, has been desperately trying to keep a job, but they can't, they can't keep a roof over their head, their social support programs in the area that they're in isn't enough to take care of them. These are all kind of like also overwhelming circumstances that like, if you don't have the resources, you can't combat them. I, I feel like it's weird that the only difference is like one is, um, 
your body like come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes meet with an expert who will do them for you so you can do not taxes hi dr rick it's julie just Queen. leaving you a voicemail my number is 618-437-7425 okay it's for can Dr. anyone Dad. tell me what julie did wrong there you got to repeat the number i mean no one's ever going to get it the first time nope didn't leave her last name. No, the, the phone tells you who called. Yeah, she didn't mention a good time to call her back. How am I supposed to know when to call her back? Uh, no, she just sh shouldn't have left a voicemail. Nine out of 10 times a text will do. Progressive okay. can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home an auto with us. Eating yourself alive versus external forces that are like engineered by society and government, basically. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's the point. You shouldn't have uh, you know, if, you know, if nature takes a, its course and you say, you know what, I don't want to fight nature. I'm just gonna, you know, I had a, I had a good run. Uh, GG, everybody. Um, you know, I'd rather, obviously, that they try and, you know, find the courage and the inner strength, uh, intestinal fortitude to try and, like, keep going and fight on. But, you know, like, if they want to let nature take its course, that's totally up to them. I just think it's kind of immoral. And like I said, I already said, like, idealistically, I mean, you know, I don't really have a good argument against that except for just morals and idealism. But mm -hmm. I think that there's a difference there. Yeah, I can definitely uh, agree that there's a difference. But I, I just, uh, in my opinion, I don't feel like it's enough to warrant allowing one person to make that choice and disallowing another person to make that choice, basically. Let me ask you something. Oh, and guys, if you happen to have a camera, turn it on. It's helping me if you do. Um, but um, let me ask you something, uh, Pep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, should the government tell parents uh, that they have to be parents, and that like uh, you have like you can't like a, a a dad can't just run away and have like zero responsibility um, from that, right? Like you know, at the very least, you have to support your child, um, even if you're not there physically. But your rights of a parent, like, stay, even if you just don't feel like it. Do you think that the government should do that? I mean, I, I, I do support the idea of, um, what's it called? Why am I blanking on this? When people have to pay for the child if they're not going to be in its life? Child yeah. support? Child support. child support, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's pretty reasonable. I think that it's, given how humans work, I think there's only so much you can do to control humans, and if you're going to, like, force somebody to be in a situation they desperately don't want to be in, I don't think it's going to be good for everybody, and especially children who are vulnerable. So I don't think that that's uh, a great thing for the government to do. But I do think that if you, like, contribute to making a human being, you do have some level of responsibility for them, and helping provide for them in their life is, yeah, I think that's super allowable. Okay. Doesn't the state well, then... also allow you the, allow you the ability to sign away your rights? to the the children that you've like brought into the world I've, so therefore well the reason why i say this is the government is giving you the ability to 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 not have to deal with something that is in essence permanent so in this case here this kind of uh, equates to what is it the um what is it afterlife care in the sense of somebody with the government is trying to like make you um what is it continue your life when you want to end it do you still get the same rights to end your life because you do, you um, are waiving your own rights against yourself? I well, think the, it's a little bit... Sorry, go ahead. You, you, you answered that question. I had a different question, but you go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's a little bit different because one involves people who are dependent on you and others, one is just like solely for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, on that dependence, right? Well, should mm -hmm. parents have the right to uh take their lives because that is definitely where it gets trickier and i feel like that's why it, it shouldn't be just like a blanket anybody who wants to die right now gets to die i think that there should be like hey like do you have any dependents do you have you secured like care for them what are like what's gonna happen to all your assets or like a lack of assets or um do you have family are they gonna have to take on their your debt like that's there's a lot of stuff to consider when it comes to death and i feel like having um systems in place to help people through that process could honestly only be beneficial I, well and maybe not I only thought, but yeah and here i thought the futurama suicide booths were going to be an option in the future <laughs> <I guess not. laughs> 
Well, the yeah, truth I, is, I, I most... would prefer them not being an option ever. I think the only distinction that I can make by like letting the government do it is that it will make it too easy for people, and more people would kill themselves that otherwise wouldn't. I, that's I agree. I don't know. think. Yeah, I don't think we should just make it easier for people to kill themselves. Um. I, okay. So... Yeah, I do think that more people will kill themselves, but I don't necessarily think that that's a bad idea. Kind of. No. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying. I mean, I I think it's a bad idea. But what I'm saying is, the truth of the matter is, like, it's not. I'm gonna say it's not that hard to kill yourself. But like, if you wanted to kill yourself, like, you can go jump off a bridge. You can go. You know, you can find a buy a gun and like you can take like there's plenty of ways you can kill yourself, but most people don't have the willpower to even get to that point. And I think that's a good thing. But if you take that out of the hands of the person where they can just sign the paper and the government will do it for them, I think that lowers the bar too much to where there'll be too many people who otherwise wouldn't be able to go through with it. But since the government's doing it for them, They'll sign up for it. I think necessary. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing uh, to help people that couldn't go through with it uh, make it happen in all circumstances. I think sometimes, yes, that there are some people who will die who didn't necessarily like need to according to how everyone would think. But again, I feel like it's not necessarily up to to us to decide that. And I think the people who couldn't um manage to get up the gumption to do it on their own but would overall benefit from like just not existing in this world anymore and is there really a benefit such as not existing is that really a benefit i think so yeah the lack of suffering is a positive i i have a chronic pain disorder and i never really realized that the lack of pain was a a like recognizable sensation until i got this pain disorder and then after a pain attack when you can finally feel it receding you're like oh my god so i do think the lack of something distressing is is a huge positive um i i want to explore more of this before that though um we have a friend lactoid who has joined us uh lactoid thanks for stopping by again um lactoid you're a pro uh suicide right i uh no no, I heard you wanted to be wrong again or something, so that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'd love to hear your opinion then. About suicide? Yeah, apparently that's what we're talking about. I would discourage people, uh, I, I would discourage suicide. Um, I, I don't know, we, I mean, we can, I don't know how much deeper you want me to go. But yeah, yeah, so so the point was like, um, uh, like making it legal and having, sure. yeah, having structures around that people can do so um, so it's different from encouraging it right like i don't think anyone here yeah. is saying they would encourage it but uh rather um that if someone wants to then there should be a process in which uh they can do so yeah exactly definitely yeah. don't want to be encouraging anybody i just don't want to remove the option from anybody yeah i don't disagree with that i uh i mean ultimately i, I believe in self-sovereignty and the right again of your your own body whether you know mm-hmm. your own life, the labor that comes with that, but you know if if you know you're somebody who you know, maybe we have like some safeguards in place where you know we make sure that you because it's such a like it's such a drastic decision that we make sure that you're actually able to consent to this. So first of all, you have to be an adult, I would say, and second of all, you mm-hmm. have to be of you have to be of sound mind. And if you're of sound mind and you're an adult and you just say you know what I, I just want to check out and everyone's like no don't do it like here's why it's stupid. Um, but like, if this is just genuinely something that you like, you just don't want to be around anymore. I mean, if it's it, whose life is it at that point? Is it mine or is it the government's? If they're telling me I can't do what I want with it, um, so no, I I am in favor of allowing it, especially in cases where you have people legitimately suffering. So people of like you know, who are in chronic pain. I think I, somebody else mentioned that. Um, people who are just can't find any like any pleasure at all from life, and they've tried everything. I mean, f- who am I to tell this person that, no, you have to stay around and suffer because it makes me, like, I, I guess, what's the argument against it? I mean, yeah. but again, I-, I think that this is, like, I mean, it's kind of like abortion, I would say. I don't think it's exactly the same, but I think it's kind of like, fine, if you want to do it on your own, then do it. Not that I want you to do it, but if you want to do it on your own, then do it. 
but to ask the government or to have it like funded in a service, I think that's a problem. I think then you're just relegating it to people. People aren't going to stop, just like abortion, just like with abortion, people aren't going to stop having abortions. People aren't going to stop killing themselves once they reach points where they're just like unable to continue with life. So you're just yeah, forcing so, people to do, but it do it on your own, unsafe and dangerous ways. That's going to cause more damage because it's problem because it's a thing that you shouldn't be doing. As we don't want to encourage you to do this thing that you shouldn't be doing. But if you want but to do it on your way, own, then do it. If there's a way to mitigate the harm from that, wouldn't it be better to well, do that? Well, if people I are think the do ultimate it? harm is that they're going to be dead once this thing happens, whether it's the government doing it or them doing it. Well, so I think I'd rather like, have a world where the government is not killing people. What, what if you had like, what if, you, what, what if it was like a, like a hospital, like, like not the government, let's say it was like a private hospital who has like, who, this person has been a patient for them for a while. And the hospital says, look, like, uh, you know, we don't want you to do it, but you've expressed to us that you like are going to do this. And you're, we, you know, we've evaluated you. You're of sound mind. You know, there's a process that you can sign up for, or it's painless. And uh, you know, we handle the disposal, and your your like your family doesn't have to walk in and have to clean up the mess afterwards. Which I mean, that's, that's likely what's going to happen if we don't have that. So I mean, it's not just death. There's other things that are like. I don't know if they're worse than death, but there's other things that we want somebody to avoid if they were going to take this action, such as again, exactly. like collateral damage. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. especially when dealing with firearms, gas. Um, I mean, pick your pick, right? And and also trauma, right? A lot of people. You know, yeah. I personally, I a uh, close friend of mine. Uh, he's he's uh, older now, but he uh, he has a, he had a whole career as a train conductor, and a lot of train conductors have PTSD because people will jump on the tracks. And, wow. um, and yeah. And so he, uh, he has been dealing with that for very, like most train conductors he knows and he himself have been dealing with that because I mean, when you, when this happens to you time and time and time again, it's incredibly difficult to deal with. That's another collateral mm -hmm. damage, right? Where you have somebody who's now having to deal with that, um, hor you know, this, the horrific kind of nature of that when, if they had an alternative, they might not do that. And now we have yeah. train conductors who are spared that, um, that horrific reality. Uh, I mean, is that, is that the other thing is, is that when you actually have somebody that commits suicide, like in their home or in yeah. a different location, usually that triggers an investigation by the, uh, by uh, what is it, the government, and that also costs a lot of money. If it's done at a medical facility and it's done by trained individuals there, they don't necessarily have to go through the same, uh, what is it, investigation, investigative measures that they would have to take had somebody just done this on their own. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think yeah. that that's that's an expense that you know i'm willing to have paid for with my tax dollars if someone goes missing for five days and it turns out that after a wellness check on the apartment that they find them in whatever state they happen to have ended themselves in i think that's i think that's uh acceptable because i think that's something that should be done if someone goes missing for like five days and no one knows where they are no one can get in contact with them i think that is something that the police should be doing actually but what about in cases where like a child finds their dad with his like brains all over the kitchen or something like that? I feel like the long term trauma of that is probably worse than a kid getting to like say a nice, pleasant goodbye to their father and see them at like his like the best he can be before he dies. Like one is obviously going to be traumatic. Both are obviously going to be traumatic. One is obviously going to be a lot more traumatic. I feel but how many well, more you know, fathers? Like, like I said, I think that that father is. Uh, morally deficient and a bad person doing that That's to their bummer. child. That doesn't change the result for the kid, though. Right, and, and, yeah. and, we, and we can we can agree did. we can agree like um, yeah. So there should be every, every effort made to discourage this person from doing this, especially if they're a fucking parent. Like holy shit. Yeah. But yeah. like yeah, um, we should yeah we should like discourage that wholeheartedly. We shouldn't. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. tell them absolutely. That's okay. I totally that's agree. Not with okay. That. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the simple act of avoid that as a circumstance. Yeah, but just the yeah. act of having it as a service is going to encourage it. And how many more fathers are going to check out their kids' life and take this, you know, optional process than the ones who would have stayed? Like, what about that hurt and that trauma? I feel like that's yeah, something that's... that could hopefully be mitigated with like the process that it would take to actually get to the point of getting the government to like agree to let you kill yourself basically i think that there should be like when you go in for an evaluation or like hey i want to do this and people are like checking to see if you're of sound mind also i have some questions on that part because 
a lot of the, the controversy about the most recent decision was allowing people with mental health issues access to this option. And how do you determine, like, if somebody is of sound mind enough? Like, that gets be, dicey. Yeah, it does get dicey. They could be super struggling, but uh, maybe they're struggling specifically because they're not of sound mind enough to control their own. Anyways, that's I, a whole I, different thing. I think the, cons Wait, the but, concern is, like, the, the, the impulsivity of it, right? Most yes, people, most people I think who that's attempt. Right. Most people who attempt are people going through like a very short term crisis and yeah. uh, very shortly afterwards, they're not going to want to do it anymore. And if yeah. they survive the attempt, they very rarely want to do it again. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that already kind of brings up a concern of, you know, there's obviously people who are not of sound mind who are engaging in this. We obviously don't want them to unless like it's something they truly want to do with their own life. But I'm saying like the edge, like the other cases, right, the cases where you have somebody who like I guess for the people who are against it, right? Let's say you have somebody who has no family and they've been like struggling with like chronic pain for the past 10 years that no one's been able to help. And he's just like, you know what? Like I'm, I'm very rational. Like I've been through like several like, like psychological examinations. I'm fine. This is my life. I just don't want to be around anymore. Like, would you guys still tell that person? No, like you, you just don't get it. You, you have to continue on. Well, I'd I'd say, like I said, I'd say, like you know, if you know they were just passive about it and they said, you know what, and instead of taking the the uh, care offered by the hospital, they'd rather just go home and just let nature take its course at home. Um, then I think that would be fine. But I, I don't. Not I don't mean that they're gonna die though. Nature won't necessarily take its course. Like I have chronic pain, I'm not dying anytime soon. It's just gonna be like this forever. Yeah, because good. Yeah, because you don't have a terminal illness or anything. Yeah, but he brought up a, an example of somebody with chronic pain. Yeah, I'm not even saying terminal illness. And, and by the uh, way, I, I, I don't think people with chronic pain, like, I don't think it's, I mean, I guess this is me making a, it's more of an advice thing, but like at the same time, even though I'd say don't do it, um, if, if some like, to, for me to dictate that they don't get to do it is sort of mm -hmm. me asserting ownership over them. Wait, but yeah. if that's the case, then why use the chronic pain examples? Why not just use the father of three who just, doesn't have any chronic pain, doesn't have any medical issues, yeah. but he just wants to, you know, end his life. Like, so I'll accept it in any, in really any circumstance, as long as you have an adult who's of sound mind. But I, mm -hmm. the, the reason I gave like the most hardcore example to you is I'm just like, I'm interested to see how far you go. Like to the, to the example that I gave, would you go, would, would you say that that person has to continue on or would you say that person has the right to leave? So that, that person should continue on. Yeah, I agree. Like, okay. I think that they should, when they go in for like the consultation or whatever, I think that they should be, the people there should, a huge facet of that experience should be offering like social support and like resources that are available that could potentially alleviate some of the problems that these people are having, whether it's like um, addiction resources or um, like funding, uh, like social safety net programs and things like that. I feel like all the avenues should be like kind of tried. Um, but yeah, if all those have already been exhausted, then I feel like then just prolonging someone's misery is the height of selfishness. I mean, I know y'all talked about like the train conductor. So you think like the same thing would happen if you were like the doctor who, you know, well, th this year I had to do, you know, 25 assisted suicides. Like I had to actually inject it. Your dog is your best friend. But your dog's best friend is your ex-girlfriend because she always has irresistible pepperoni. Be your best friend's best friend. Pepperoni. Listen to someone and they kill, you know, for them to kill themselves. Like, I think that's yeah, something else because to do I know that, like, when my grandpa died, his hospice nurses made sure he was, like, super taken care of at the end, and they were all, like, very, very... I think if you're in that line of work, I think it would probably take a specific personality type who is happy to help somebody, like, be as comfortable as possible at the end of their life. Um, but I feel like that would be less traumatizing is different than, like, because, ER doctors, you know? I mean, but hospice, like you said, there's already this understanding that this is the end of this person's life, so you aren't really doing anything you know, well, to sh sh cut their life short. It's really similar. I, I, I worked as a, what is it, a CNA for a year back when I was in high school. And when you have people that are of sound mind that know that they're at the end of the life, 
they're usually at peace with the idea that this is the end of their life. Like, yeah, but I'm saying the cases are, we're talking that about are in fear. But there are people that are in fear at the end of their life. But there are people that are completely at peace with the idea that they are 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 very close to death. And probably the majority of the people that are going to be asking for this service are going to be completely at peace with their death. Now, when I worked there, I necessarily didn't have necessarily have a problem with the people that were completely at peace that were dying. The thing that really irked me because I was in high school at the time were the people that were dying that were freaking out when they were dying. Yeah, that I can that would be really rough. That was that was actually that was I don't want to say that that was trauma, but that was extremely stressful, and it made it so mm-hmm. that I couldn't continue working the job. To, to okay, address the, yeah, I, want, I want to address the Lyme's point directly. Um, you would likely need to have somebody who has a very specific personality type to do that job. But right now, I mean, it's not like we don't have people who do that job right now, right? Like there are people whose mm-hmm. entire job is to go in afterwards after a suicide and clean up. And you have people like train conductors who didn't really sign up to see people being killed. They wanted just to conduct a train and now they have to see it, right? At the very least, now you have somebody who, I mean, they know what they're signing up for, right? Like it's their job description. You're going to help people in their lives. I mean, I feel like that comes with maybe more mental preparation than like a train conductor or, you know, or a cop, because a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people, suicide by cop is real, right? I mean, if you want to die, you charge a cop with a knife. You're not trying to kill the cop. You know what the cop's going to do if you're like get within you know a yard of them with a knife. What they have to do, which is kill you. They don't have to do that. Just be very clear. They don't have to. Yeah, do they, that. they don't <laughs> have to kill you. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they they could suicide by a uh, th- uh, random attacker, I guess. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, uh, oh, oh, are you talking? Oh, you're you're reversing. I see. I'll. Um, I'm saying that uh, the cop uh, can use non-lethal methods to do them. That's definitely an option. We just don't do that here in the States. If they're um, charging them with a knife. Yeah, actually, exactly that. Charging them with a knife, Prime, and they how, still take them alive. What would you suggest to diffuse a, a situation of a suicidal marauder with a knife charging you full speed? How, how would Taze you them. de-escalate? Yeah. Taze them. Taze them. Uh, Taze them would not work out and well if, for you on average. If you miss? Uh, it's, not just a, it's not that you miss. You, do, you can hit, and still the taser is not the guarantee. If it's uh, if your life energy. is in it's not danger, guaranteed, but it should still be tried. No, no, no. Yeah. It's 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 like a very low chance. Uh, if somebody wants to commit suicide and you're relying on a taser, you're doing it wrong. What normally happens, what should happen, is somebody should be lethal and somebody should be non-lethal. And once the distance is closed, you have to go lethal because you have to stop the threat uh, because you'd rather have that person die than. Uh, any of your, um, you know, enforcement officers dying uh, in that situation. No, you, no if I you, agree. You don't have let, to do let me just let, let me just explain to you, maybe just so we're all on the same page of, of what the, the issues are with tasers. First of all, if your body mass is large enough and you're in, on certain drugs, um, you're going to be potentially less affected and it's not a guarantee to shut down your muscles. Second of all, both prongs have to hit. Um, and they have to embed in the skin and they have to be not torn by your movement. And as if somebody's charging you, there is there's the, their clothes are hanging in front of them potentially. So anyone with a hoodie, anyone with extra layers of clothes might leather not jacket. Be, leather jacket might not be penetrated with the prongs. Uh, you might hit um, certain tissue that doesn't convey electricity as as well. So there's there's a, there's a lot there that happens and it's um, uh, it takes seconds. If you look at, um, uh, we used to have live leak. Now I don't know what, which side uh, you, you can you can watch gore at. But oh, did they they uh, shut down live leaks finally? <laughs> Is that yes, uh, but uh, <laughs> but but you can still find like gore videos of people getting. You shouldn't. Not safe. <laughs> but uh, of police officers in other countries getting charged by knife wielding assailants and and like multiple people dying as a result. For every single video where you find them safely apprehended and somebody pulling a crazy karate move, right? There's also those videos where it doesn't work out well. So you have to look at, you know, statistics and risk. And nobody should take, um, should like risk their life. Now, oh, oh I'll, no, I'll no. Do... I, I reject that. Literally, that's their job. Literally, yeah. that's their job is to risk their life. 
So yeah. no, to, uh, put the to put the public. Well, sorry, it should be. Uh, in the U.S., who the fuck knows? I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Our friend mm-hmm. Lactwood could tell me. Um, you know, the law says. Oh no, I guess protecting their own lives is most important. But at the very least, the job should be that uh, uh, their lives come secondary, right? Like you, uh, you're protecting the public when you put on the uniform. And if you can't do that, that's not something you're up to. That's okay. Don't be a police officer. I think though that it, it goes beyond. So. To some extent, I can I can agree that like you just sign up to be a cop. I don't think that being a like signing up to be a cop necessarily means that like if a man like a man, like let's say a man with a full leather jacket is charging you with a sword, that like you can't take steps to prevent him from killing you. And I also am concerned of well, this is a man with a sword charging me. If he kills me and we're in public, then he could kill like three other people around me. And so by killing him, I am sort of protecting the public. I am doing my duty by ending the threat, right? I'm, I, I guess I my only issue... Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say this, and then I'd love to hear what you have to say, Pat. Yeah. Um, and we have a whole bunch of other people who jumped in, so I'll guess what their thoughts were as well. But um, uh, uh, it's, it's that, like, uh, in the U.S., it seems like our only option is is murder right like the you the first option you went to oh well, of course we're gonna have to kill him of course we have to shoot him like there are other options here right and so yeah a taser might not be uh great for every situation but there are other like these officers are supposed to be trained to be able to handle these things right if they're not being trained well then we should train them to actually be able to handle something like this um and uh it it, it should be the case that like the preservation of life is their uh is their foremost thought. Now that's not always possible, and I don't want to like uh, have officers arrested just because they happen to pull and use their guns, right? There are certainly circumstances where that is the case, but uh, in the U.S., it's uh, a bang, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. In other countries, they actually do try this, and 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 the only time in the U.S. that we we seem to figure out those options is the assailant's white. Anyway, uh, Pep, go ahead. I was about to echo the same thing. Basically, that it seems like a lot of people use the the fact that it doesn't work every time as an excuse to not make it a priority to try it at all. And I don't think that that's the, the best way that it should be. They're, they're trying it as much as they can. Um, and what? again, you should From look- what I've seen, you, you should, I feel like. Well, uh, here, I'll tell, I'll give you this. Here's what, mm-hmm. when you look at the video, here's what, ma- the only thing that makes me suspicious is when uh, if it's a lone police officer and they have been called into a scene where somebody is potentially wielding a knife, when they themselves close the distance and like pull out the gun, uh, to me that's that's the part where it sort of gets suspicious. Where their training should be telling them to, um, to you know, to keep a distance, to uh, and then to escalate towards bringing like a negotiator, bring, waiting for backup. So when they don't do that, that you can say that's an issue of training. Uh, but if there um, if there were two people and if they had non-lethal, but the non-lethal, uh, you know, it's very often you see the end of like multiple attempts in in a video, um, and so and also uh, in the United States specifically we have body cameras now, so we get a lot more video material. We tend to think that it happens a lot more, whereas uh, in most other countries there's no body cam video uh, whatsoever. Like I don't know. Can you locate like an easy body cam video of France or 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 the UK of somebody uh, dealing with a knife uh, wielding assailant? Well, you probably can't because they don't have that as a law. So you get like the CCTV occasionally captures the event, but we have like 300 million people. We're four five times bigger than the UK or any other European country, so we get a lot more of those videos of of cops actually killing people, uh, yeah, but I- we don't get a lot of them. Like if you look at uh police activity right it's full of police shot knife building victim videos and they pull all of them for the nets it's time for a fresh start this year start new with blue switch to healthy blue buffalo today pick up blue wherever you buy pet food states but it would we have them like uh maybe once a day for the entire country. And if you think about the rate of other violent crimes that occur, like other events, it's, it's very, it's actually less than I said, but it's very rare. It's like, just think of the number of people and, and that everything is being recorded. Happy one to say. So if, we're, if we're talking about, 
Uh, if we're talking about like like incidents with knives and whatnot, where the police are called in Japan, like people bringing knives into different locations is actually a really common occurrence. Uh, it happens more often than you think. It's not like a, like net zero, but usually when something like this happens, they usually like when the police are notified, like eight people show up at once to the location and they literally have a tactic in which they surround people. And one person is basically communicating with the person. And when that uh, when the person with the knife is not looking, another person comes up behind them and then like gets them into a position in which they can't utilize the knife. And then all, what is it, seven other officers, like, jump on top of them. This is a, a tactic that they constantly use, like, all the time in Japan for almost every knife incident that's captured on, like, a, what is it, like, camera. So, like, this is good in Japan, where you have, like, a tiny country with short distances. It's, it's perfectly valid. Uh, in, in New York City, this could work, like what you say. Like, in New York City, if you have uh, enough police officers, maybe, to get eight people to show up on a crime... But if Wait, you're in some you rural seen place how many in Texas, cops, how many cops show up for like a traffic ticket or like yeah. a person disorderly? <laughs> yeah, it depends where you're there's at. There's 15 cops. It depends like, where you're we at. have it enough cops. Depends where you're at. No. Driving while black requires at least six cruisers. So oh, there, there's <laughs> like there's like some rural areas where like there's like two officers like for you know the next four miles, right? You get out of Montana, you're not gonna have eight officers. And by the way, and the people both who be, of them are at that traffic well, stop. Well, the people who are go, <laughs> the people who are gonna be committing suicide by cop, I mean they're not. They're gonna find like one isolated officer and charge him because what they're trying to do is get the cop to shoot them. Like that's what their intention is. Well, they don't need. Do you to mind rolling time. back? Sorry, uh, Pram. Can I ask a question about the prior topic? Uh, sure. Um, and I, I do want to make uh, you can ask that question. I want to make space for the debate where I see that you're there, so I want to make sure you got space up as well. Go ahead. The the, the suicide of the um, government uh, suicide programs and like institutions. Uh, one risk you should uh, just think about and evaluate is uh, uh, is this idea that uh, r right now if anyone well you shouldn't do it as I, as everybody said but uh, if somebody wants to suicide they sort of can figure out how to do it it's not too difficult in a country with uh, um, relatively easy access to you know firearms weapons of all kinds chemicals of all kinds to do what you need to do the problem is that now you have an official program. And if the government wants to eliminate political competition, uh, then um, you know having a prisoner, a political prisoner, request to commit suicide, or having um, you know somebody suicided, and then uh, the, the the right doctor produces the right document to say, oh, there's nothing nothing going on here, nothing to worry about. Um, that should be a concern. Like I, I'm not comfortable with uh, with any federal agency. Uh, having the right to kill. That's why I'm against uh, even uh, leave, just yeah, regular. Leave not, that's why I'm, that's regular death penalty as well. In the beginning, I was talking about death panels because you know there were lots of concerns about Canada about the government just saying, "Oh, you need help? Well, we don't want to give it to you. How how about you kill yourself?" And I think that's that's abhorrent. Yeah, I think that that's should not never thing. happen. And uh, did you read my sources? Not a thing. I'm, uh, I, I did you, did you read my sources where it was a thing? Uh, it, it that's was, the question. Okay, let me take a look at this. It's not a thing. Um, oh, oh, so you, so you didn't wait. read my chat? Oh, I'll, 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 I'll look at it. No, I'll look at it. You could get around this, though, Casimir, by just saying, like, well, there's very strict rules in place that you have to show, like, a history of, like, uh, of wanting to do this. And, like, maybe even, like, there's a requirement where the request has to be publicly available. Like, in terms of, like, you, the video, I don't know, you figure out some fucking way. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, or maybe this, we don't, we don't allow it, uh, for anybody, uh, like who's, a uh, arrested or anybody in jail. Like they, they don't get to do it. Only people yeah. who are free. Yeah. We, we, all of this has like potential workarounds. I'm just, uh, I'm saying yeah. that if, if this was, um, like when there's a company that sells, um, uh, like devices that people can buy to, to commit suicide, like stuff like that. You can't really make that illegal, I think, because it's you know they can advertise it whatever that is, um, and 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 that's like a separate issue. But if uh, um, let's say a police officer comes to the location, gets called in to a person in in that you know device, they should investigate it as like a potential crime. They should rule out a murder. Uh, they should just like the laws shouldn't be different than they are um, now, um, b because once you introduce this idea of like 
anything Lactoid mentioned, anything you can you want to produce, the government can figure out how to produce it. And right now we have a fairly decent government, like with all the criticisms that there are of them, right? Uh, but around the world, we see governments that are easily sliding towards quite not decent towards their political opponents, and this happens very rapidly. So we want to have every layer of protection possible and just not have that as an option um, at all, like have it purely on the civilian market. Yeah, so I, I just looked at um, uh, Al's uh, sources, right? And it's the thing that he said is happening isn't happening. Um, uh, saying but that, oh, well, no, 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 nope, that's, okay, here's exactly what you said. You said that um, when uh, uh, people, when the government can't help you, it's just like saying, hey, why don't you just die instead? That's what you said. What your sources yeah. say nice. is that, like, uh, when uh, yeah. doctors okay, are required to bring up medically assisted suicide when it is relevant. Just, hey, this is an option for you. Not saying, we don't want to help you. Why don't you die instead? Those are very different things. The thing you said is happening well, it, well, is not happening, well, even to your own sources. Yeah, but it, but, but... But do you yeah? But do you think it's a little bit awkward where you say, "Oh, I need help with such and such and such" because I feel such and such, and they say, "Oh, well, you know what? It's also a, a good option, killing yourself." Like I and, mean, like yeah, they're not, okay, they're not gonna on. say, "Oh, we don't want to help you, fuck you." And, and if you want to make yeah, that oh, narrow you know what's point, also a good option? because one of your one of your um um sources talked about like veterans seeking help and then yeah. medically assisted suicide is brought up to them, right? I think there might be something to yeah. that, to say that this person who's probably in a fragile state, that maybe, like, this is... While it should be an option, I think, you maybe you shouldn't bring it up at that very moment, right? That that might yeah. increase... You shouldn't bring it up like, at all. If no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't try, don't need, try to change your like, point. Oh, you know don't what? try... Like I'm not going to let you, because what you said was different. And what I, and I, I kept saying it is not a fucking thing. The Canadian government isn't telling people, oh, we can't help you, Delilah. so die. You yeah. lied about that. It's not true. doesn't happen. I didn't lie about that. That's no, what you saying. literally did. You said it multiple said, times. You I said, look at my sources. I look at your sources, and you were wrong. And I'm a veteran. You're, you know the sources you gave me. You, know, you gave me you? the two sources, right? Correct? Yeah, I didn't come up with those sources. sources. You gave me those two sources, and they don't say what yeah, you said. That is absolutely not the case. You're misrepresenting it. Wow, nice try. Nice try. Nice fucking try. I can't nice try. You you no, I'm sorry if I interpret wrong. your words by like listening to your words, unfortunately, <laughs> and then actually like uh, going uh, a set, uh, like word by word, figuring out, oh hey, this is what he means, because it's the obvious thing what you mean. Don't try to change your words on me. But you know no, what you I'm can do. Wait, wait, wait. Do you I'm know what you can do? You can you can instead of bringing those silly empiricals, you can just bring in a hypothetical. And against a hypothetical, you can't really weasel out. It doesn't matter if it happens or not. It's a hypothetical. So you can say, hypothetically speaking, is it ever good for a government agent to offer a person the, the option of suicide? And my answer, my answer person would be like, never. If the person volunteers and says, hey, um, is there any, uh, any way for me to end my life peacefully? That's a separate question whether the government should say yes. I would say still no, but that's a separate way, right? But if they, sure. if the government volunteers that information, that's already sort of sketchy, even if they do it in the nicest way possible. I think there are yeah. times that well, doctors already offer like end of life care options when people are terminal. So I don't really see that there's like there's a contextual difference, but I feel like that can be handled with like training and policy and how to like handle those situations gracefully. But I don't think that there's like a huge like um, pragmatic difference. Wait, wait, uh, no, end of but... life is different. Can you say the same thing just clearly? Would you be okay with a doctor? proposing, uh, as part of end-of-life, proposing medically assisted suicide to any patient? Not to any as patient, but in general, yes, I think that that's, I think that they should be allowed to give them all the options available to them. Yeah, but I just, I disagree, because I think, like, in the second source, I said, like, when it's veterans are complaining, because, you know, they're veterans, they serve their country well, and now they're, you know, not in the ser currently serving military force, and but they're, they're trying to get some uh, help from the government for whatever ailments or, or assistance that they might need, whether it be, like, in one case, they needed a wheelchair ramp installed in their home or whatever things they need. And then, you know, instead of getting the help that they're requesting, you know, they're getting, like, um, you know, 
unsolic you know un unsolicited referrals to like assistance in dying, which is uh, uh, you know like just like insulting one and very traumatizing, as it said in the um in the article, like people are, you know, it's like, it can be a very traumatizing experience when you're asking for a specific thing of help. And they say, like, well, actually, have you thought about actually yeah, just dying? And like, that, that's, that's a fucked up thing to do. And I don't think that should ever be done. I think maybe there should be more training in terms of like when and how to bring it up. Um, Cause it seems like maybe some people are doing it inappropriately, but I think overall that's not a good reason to just like get, be against it entirely. Like well, the in, reason in is that settings, they, they always there's so many times where almost like any time I've gone to a new doctor, they give you like a whole quiz. Like, do you feel safe at home? Are you like, is your partner nice to you? Like, do they do you guys fight? Do they beat you? And it's never like been relevant to me, but I am not going to begrudge them off like asking and offering because if somebody needed that needed that, then I would want them to have it, you know? Right. So the, the problem, particularly with this uh, with this thing is and the reason why I don't even like to say the word. Uh, is because uh, the very suggestion, the reminder that this exists, uh, starts entering the mind of a person who would otherwise not uh, potentially survive the whole encounter and figure out how to uh, continue living their life. Uh, but they get this idea injected into their um, sort of thinking uh, by an outsider, and it becomes part of their um, uh, of the solutions they think about. Uh, whereas what should happen. Uh, is if they go to a doctor, the doctor should be following the Hippocratic Oath, doing the least amount of harm, including not mentioning suicide first. If if, if medical assistance suicide comes up in the mind of the patient, uh, independently or through family or however it, it occurs, that that's you know a separate debate. Uh, but I, I think you're missing that point here, where even suggesting it is potentially harmful. I can see that, but I also think that that's the sort of thing that would be tempered by the like bureaucratic process out of necessity, like having to have them go see a psychiatrist after that and like go through steps before they're actually able to make a decision. If it's just something that like somebody puts a brainworm in their head about it and they're like obsessing over it for days and days and days, then I feel like that's the sort of thing that now this does rely on uh, state psychiatrists being uh, competent and sometimes that can be an issue. I would be willing to like be like, yeah, maybe that's suboptimal. But I do think overall, just some instances being suboptimal aren't a reason to be entirely against it. Okay, so uh, the uh, board hasn't had a chance to speak, and I got also. So, uh, debate board, if you have something to add. Uh, thanks, Prime, for having me on. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to keep up with the uh, topics here. We kind of moved away from suicide back to. And now we're back to suicide here. Somebody in chat mentioned that what was being discussed earlier, earlier regarding suicide was um, uh, something having to do with optional. Um, but what I was hearing were words like processes and structures. And I was wondering if, if the panelists had any idea of what they really meant by those words, structure and processes uh, in, this, in this framework of suicide, what was actually meant by those words. Uh, for, I think having uh, probably multiple sessions with a, a therapist or psychiatrist and um, maybe uh, uh, maybe there would be like a new kind of civil servant that helps with like kind of end of life planning the way uh, there are like uh, private entities that do that. Um, maybe hospitals would supply one of those as well. Okay, so and is this is this in the context of suicide for any reason, assisted suicide anyway for any reason? Yes. Okay, so uh, that's what I thought I was hearing was this advocacy for, um, you know, for anyone to, um, to enjoin the service of a hospital or a doctor to help them die essentially, and what's what's ironic about this is. Even before the state of Oregon, where I live now, decided they were going to legalize physician-assisted suicide, you know, the, the warning that was poo-pooed and discarded uh, rather easily and carelessly as a slippery slope argument uh, was that, look, we're, we're going to start now down, down this path uh, where assisted suicide uh, will be, you know, will be granted for any reason whatsoever, where doctors and hospitals will be, uh, will have to provide this service. And uh, I think we're, we're bearing this out now. 
uh, in Germany, they're already there. Uh, Netherlands, Belgium, and other uh, countries in Europe, they're already there. Canada um, is very nearly there. And I see us quickly rushing down this road headlong here in the United States where uh, it's no longer assisted suicide for, um, uh, for you know, diseases, terminal diseases. It's not even assisted suicide anymore. Uh, that's limited to uh, extreme, you know, pain or suffering. Uh, now we're going down to even mental and physical disabilities. So um, I, I'm glad it's refreshing to hear the, maybe accidentally, but it's refreshing to hear someone actually be honest that, yeah, uh, people ought to be able to commit suicide whenever they feel like it. Um, they ought to be uh, provided services um, by hospitals and doctors. Now, the only remaining question is, is do you compel those doctors and hospitals to do so? And uh, and if not, then what? I feel like I haven't specifically formulated my opinion on the latter part of that yet. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I, I do take issue with you saying people aren't, it's not just people who are in pain and suffering. They're doing it for people with like chronic illnesses and mental illnesses as well. And those people definitely can be in pain and suffering. So I do take issue with that. And I, my, I don't think anybody should just be able to walk in off the street and be like, I'm done with today. Just fucking take me out right now. But I think people who are in distress, what regardless of whether it meets uh, like your particular parameters for what is distressing, if it's distressing for them to continue to live, I don't think they should be forced to. Well, um, one of the things uh, that we know about is, uh, is we know how advertising works. So the, one of the ways that, that you introduce an idea or a product is just uh, you, you have it appear in, in the consciousness. So, you know, somebody in the chat using the word euthanasia, it's a, that's a much better euphemism than what we're saying, right? Because it doesn't bring up that word. And the more you bring up that word, the more it shows up in media, in various TV shows, um, it, it sort of starts working like advertising. It... Um, uh, inserts the idea that um, ending your life is no longer a taboo, no longer a sin, right? And it becomes something acceptable. And so so um, I see that like with every advertising, you won't see a direct correlation, but you do see people advertise products for a reason because they see that as an increase in their bottom line. They see that it's effective. So we should be very careful. Um, and it's very scary to see um, you know, the, I think it was Canada that had that TV ad for, um, you know, a person was advertising how they ended their own life and they showed up in the ad and it was all made beautiful with like these fantastic images. Uh, I, I think that's all dangerous. We, we know what advertising does, right? We, we also know that, that we yeah. can't prove it. There's no proof that advertising works. It's almost impossible to prove. But we know that a lot of money goes into advertising. So when governments start advertising such things, don't, shouldn't you just be a little bit worried? I do think there should I be like certain restrictions. Be worried. On, yeah, on advertising. I don't think it should be something that should be glorified. I don't think it should be something for profit. I think that there are definitely pitfalls to be had. But again, I think that the pitfalls are all ones that can be like countered by certain measures and avoided for the most part. And the while the overwhelming majority of like the results from these things will be a net positive with like a fringe of negatives, just like every single thing has. Like in hospitals, people get addicted to pain meds after surgery. That's like a terrible, terrible, awful thing, but we still let people have surgery. Well, um, any feel, any feel, it's hard to make comparisons that are legitimate when, um, or somebody potentially um, something harmful happens to a person. I don't know. They get imprisoned or they get harmed in some way. Uh, there's always the possibility of restitution. There's a way to roll things back if, if a mistake was made. But with what we're talking about, one of the risks is that there's no way to roll it back. Um, and there are more incentives than direct profit. There are incentives like utilizing a budget because it's always going to be the most expensive procedure. Um, uh, institutions would uh, um, would like to utilize the budget allocated for that. So there is always going to be these types of pressures. And they're going to be like um, uh, allocating budget. I'm losing weight with the Slim Fast plan. Wait! That's Slim Fast of the 80s. This is today's Slim Fast. With creamy shakes like mocha cappuccino. Whoa, radical! 
radical. And what's even more radical is that you can drink it wherever, whenever. It's for informing the public, which is what they're doing now in Canada. So it's not just like fear. It's not like somebody in chat wrote, oh, you're, you're just afraid of the consequences. Well, we're seeing the consequences already. We're seeing, uh, like, should we wait until people start dying? Like, if you start advertising smoking on TV again, should I be surprised if more children are going to be smoking in the next decade? Or, or did we, like, live through that already? And we said, no, 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 let's not advertise harmful stuff uh, on TV if we can avoid it in, in various countries, right? Like, I agree that, that it probably shouldn't be advertised on TV. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Okay, or well, at least we got a concession on that. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I think that the, the doctor offering it is sort of in the same vein where I would... I guess we agree on the, on the general advertising, but I guess it's fine. Yeah, one other thing that I wanted to point out is that you said that, like, this is something most of the time you make a choice and there's always like a way to kind of mitigate it or come back from it. That is not at all the case. There are so many medical procedures. Like my friend went in to um, have an ovarian cyst removed and they, due to medical malpractice, they fucked up. She got sepsis and they had to do a full hysterectomy on her. And now she can like never have kids. Like there are always things that can happen in life that there is no coming back from. And it's to say that like, that's a reason not to offer assisted suicide. I just don't think that that's like necessarily valid Sad. i don't i i yeah i don't necessarily see how what is it it would be financially beneficial for um hospitals that uh operate under a private single payer, payer or multi-payer healthcare system in which they would offer what is it like assisted suicide or, or euthanasia as a practice because i think it would go against like their their profit motive for those um hospitals so I, I lived I through this uh, in real time um, because my this wasn't assisted suicide, but uh, my father like had a stroke or something. We don't know what it was actually because it became irrelevant when his head hit the ground <clears throat> and sort of split his skull open, and so as a result, like that became the thing that that put him in a coma or they had to induce a coma. And then for days, we had to figure out, like, was he going to come out of it? What are his odds? You know, should we pull the plug or whatever? I actually consulted my priest on this. And um, it turned out to be considered a prudential decision because there were no extraordinary measures uh, required. Um, uh, to, so uh, it, it, we had it was OK morally for us to decide whether or not to pull the plug. And it actually wasn't up to me. It was up to somebody else uh, in my family. It was up to my stepmother at the time. <clears throat> and uh, she decided to pull the plug. And I had a different opinions on that, but I also understood that her decision came at a, um, you know, from a place of love. But my point is uh, when we were there and making that decision, it did seem like the hospital had an interest in it. And it, and, and the, the, ICUs were all full, and they wanted that bed for somebody else. And, I mean, they weren't telling us, hey, go do this. But I could tell from some of the conversations that were being had that, yeah, the hospital had an interest in freeing up that bed for the next patient to come in. So even though, yes, they do make a profit off of providing services, um, there are certain, like, areas of the hospital that are such in demand that really like getting people out of those beds becomes a higher priority. So there can be some like distorting um, uh, uh, elements, you know, uh, uh, motives that are happening within the system. Could this be an issue with the number of beds per thousand, like per thousand people or necessarily just the hospitals themselves it was in this case about the number of beds in the icu specifically uh, and there just wasn't enough um, th there were there were maybe enough rooms in the hospital you know or if there were elective surgeries to be had in, in some of those uh, surgery theaters then yeah i i think probably they would rather have the business than not have the business but in terms of like that part of the hospital it was always full all the time and they always wanted people out so they could bring the next the next one. I do think in. there are like a lot of overarching problems with the, like the healthcare industry in general, like hospitals being consistently understaffed and kind of like people being underpaid there. Um, 
but I I think those are individual reasons that should be addressed on their own, not necessarily as like a, a reason not to uh, have assisted suicide. Yeah, the, yeah, the hospitals I, are. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I just I don't want to. I'm not trying to impugn the hospital like they were doing. You know what they were doing. Like I I, I hate I don't want anyone to like be cast as a villain. I'm just mm-hmm. saying that there are like. Um, uh, distorted like um, motivations present, even among people who are just trying to do the right thing, like by their lights. And uh, I, I also doubt there's there's uh, the villains are too rare. Uh, but w- what often happens is, uh, uh, although there are such cases, but it's, they're not worth talking about. But uh, what often uh, happens is like these um, just. Uh, weird incentives show up sometimes procedures um uh, like the you might think oh, oh it's better for them to keep a patient and just keep doing all you know daily tests and trials and uh, and profit on that but occasionally uh that procedure will require such levels of verification participation by various um you know individuals that that in itself became becomes uh, a ticket and then, as as you say, the the bed is freed, and and they can bring in another person. So it becomes very weird. Uh, in terms of the um, the availability of service, that's a separate debate. But you should look into restrictions on the hospital expansions. Uh, anytime something is in short um, um, short supply in an economy, you should look at why is what's who's controlling the supply. And very often you would see that there is a rule against uh, hospital expansions in an area. And there's a rule against hospital construction in an area that sort of prevents you from um, uh, from having like response to demand. Yeah, I do agree that our overall like healthcare system is is kind of cursed in that way. So there are problems in that regard for sure. Um. So uh, I wanted to uh, like uh, escalate this a little bit. Um. Uh. In depth. Uh, a debate board, you'll you'll like this, uh, or hate it, uh, probably hate it. Um, uh, let's talk about that euthanasia. Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, euthanasia specifically when it comes to infants, like there are infants who are born, uh, with tragic illnesses, right? Just awful. Um, and they'll be dead. Um within let's say a, a a few let's say a few months right um but it's going to be a painful death i mean if we left them on like a, a nicu ventilator or whatever they might survive for you know again those few months but their death is assured um there is no cure or anything like that uh, uh in that situ- situation i contend that uh euthanasia um properly regulated uh, would be uh the, the right thing to do I agree. I actually don't uh, have many objections on on that front. It's like uh, it should be um, a thing that that is um, the procedure should be very similar to uh, like uh, uh, any sort of other um, potential investigation. Like uh, bec- because this is somebody who is uh, under guardianship. You should verify that the decision was made uh, by the guardians in, tr- in the interests of the of the of the person in trust, and so that's the if there is a purpose to government or some local agency, it's to oversee that part to make sure that this is indeed a guardianship decision. Oh, um, so it's not an economic that? decision. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't be ever an economic decision. Like um, let's say that uh, I'll explain why perhaps. Uh, because uh, if a guardian can't handle guardianship, they shouldn't be a guardian. So it's always that uh, they sh- should always be representing um, this, you know, the child uh, from the perspective of the child's best interests. And so that's the thing we have to control for. Um, and maybe there could be, you know, charity organizations that we should donate to that would also provide an additional oversight where they would see. If there's euthanasia occurring, and even if the government doctors are saying that this is the case, uh, they, if somebody wants to pay for a second opinion and contest it as a legal representative, potentially contest the guardianship, that should all ha- potentially happen. Uh, but 
if the guardians and anyone that can comment on the process says that you know this is an end of life situation come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes meet with an expert who will do them for you so you can do not taxes basically uh, and I think it's quite a bit different than when you deal with uh, with an adult, because with an adult you can't. So this is the thing. Once we agree that somebody is an adult, um, I think it changes the picture radically, uh, because then they're making the decision, and having anyone suggest the decision to them or try to influence them um, or try to uh, because then they're making provide the them with like a free and having anyone government suggest option, the decision to them that or becomes try sketchy. to influence them. Um, or try to for provide them with like a free is... government option yeah, this is, I mean, that this becomes is sketchy to me. Wild. Um, I mean, uh, in your preamble, you set up all sorts of circumstances and yeah, this conditions. Is, this, and this is and uh, I'm wondering, are, are you talking um, about euthanizing a newborn baby? You're talking about euthanizing a 12 year old, and or are you talking about euthanizing a 16 year old who? the state government now recognizes as mature and simply wants to die because, well, they want to die. I mean, what are you really talking about? So I, I was specifically talking about like infants, um, uh, those who uh, aren't going to live and who are just going yeah, yeah, uh, to work. So that was my point there. Um, yeah. yeah. So what we've seen, though, is we've already slipped away from that. Right. So, what was it the the Netherlands had the Groninger, the Groningen protocols, right? Um, where, uh, oh boy, what I, f I forget what the Netherlands permits uh, essentially uh, legalized infanticide um, uh, for kids. Pause uh, for a second. Did Barbara Walters yeah. die? I'm just learning this. I'm looking at yeah. When, yeah, when she that happened? Like, yeah. Years ago. Oh, oh wait a minute. So she died two days ago. Two days ago? Oh, I thought you should just say a couple of years ago. Oh, two days ago. All right. So yeah, I completely missed that. I was like looking at remembrance. Oh my goodness, that's so sad. Rest in peace, Barbara Walters. That I happened completely missed that one. Okay. Well, I mean, she was pretty old. Um. <laughs> uh. But well, I don't well know. it happened. It happened she was so ninety-three years old. Was she was ninety-three Listen, years old. Listen, were you expecting it this week? I I wasn't expecting it, so this fair enough. Um, okay, so it was sorry. Too soon. It was too I, soon. It was she was better. given great compliments to at the end. She was called a journalist by multiple outlets. <laughs> uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'll give you that one. That was good. Go ahead, debate bar. I apologize for interrupting so, you. So, I, the reason that I pointed out that you had prefaced your intro here with a bunch of circumstances or conditions that would suggest, you know, highly controlled and, and a limiting principle on this. We've already abandoned this, whether it's in the Netherlands or it's in Belgium where there's no lower uh, age limit, uh, where we see 10 and 12 year olds uh, being euthanized or assist or provided medical assistance and dying. Um, we've already, we've already abandoned that approach. And that's the, I guess that's my overall picture here is that, um, wherever we legalize um, assisted suicide, we get more of it. Um, and despite the, bi the bioethicists and the medical ethicists and progressives telling us that, oh, hey, we're, we're really just limiting it to those who have terminal diseases who are, uh, and, then, and then switching to, well, terminal diseases and insufferable pain. And oh, well, uh, not, not just those things now, but, um, but now um, a botched, sex change surgeries for example uh there's there's an example i recall of this so uh, we're this is a entirely slippery slope where any limiting principle within just a few years is abandoned anyway so i'm not sure why we why we conditionalize something that's why i thought it refreshing earlier on when one of the other panelists was like well yes yeah, suicide for any reason medical assistance in suicide for any reason um because i think it, it's an actual more honest okay. assessment I think that was me, and I do want to clarify that I didn't mean just anybody could walk into a place and be like, kill me now. I have consistently said tonight that there should be, like, a series of steps that they have to go through and evaluations and stuff like that. Well, but if a sure, person but those... decides they really, like, don't want to live and they have compelling reasons for it, I do think that they should be like Sure, that. but why, Wait, well, why, why is it compelling what is it? reasons? Well, what, uh, if what they're is in, that, like, why just constant distress in their life? If there's not a compelling reason to... Well, I don't know. Maybe that's where my, my moral kind of, like, line is on that. Oh. Um... 
Future right. Uh, suicide booth. Yeah, I just literally made that joke like like yeah. an hour ago. <laughs> just uh, yeah, so just I, to be sure, uh, that's not what Prime suggested, though. Yeah, I thought the the purpose of the medical evaluation was just to make sure they were sound mind because we were the question we were asking was should anyone be able to do it? So it it there shouldn't need to be a compelling reason. It should just be okay. You're sound mind. You've had this desire to do it for six months. Now you can do it. Yeah, I think the compelling reason, that's, like, a very nebulous thing, and I think it should be, that's why it has to, like, go through an evaluation process. Like, if a person is in a crisis, but they haven't, like, tried all the avenues to get them, get help or assistance with that particular crisis, then I don't think that they, like... Well, if they don't want to. I think that if they can't, if they don't want to, then I feel like that's a different story. I don't know well, that and I that's would... what we're, well, that's where that's I think you end up yeah. with. I think that's where you end up. How, how do you end is... up there? I think it, you you, I think you it haven't depends. like there's there's two arguments, right? Uh, there's the, the most recent one that Prime brought in, where it's only in cases where uh, you can prove that somebody is going to die, uh, but die in great suffering and like it's a terminal condition, or if they're born, I don't know, uh, without a brain and they're already basically a vegetable and they'll never turn on, and if you can prove that. Uh, then you, uh, you know, the guardians decide to pull the plug. That's one distinct case. You're saying there's a slippery slope from that to the position that um, uh, that is uh, espoused by, you know, the other person on the panel. But it's a different position, and and I would be with you there that it's probably oh, yeah. not a oh, good well, thing. What about what about my the one that I proposed about you know like how in Canada there are complaints from several veterans that. You know, they want help with a specific thing that they're coming to their, you know, veterans agency or yeah, but it's, and then, you know, unprompted and unsolicited, they're getting like referrals. Yeah, to, but like, we discussed this. Why are we turning back the government? Yeah, yeah because, but we talked about it. We said, already know everybody's position. Point. So, Casimir, are you yeah, asking yeah, me how, how this is a slippery slope? Yeah, I'm, I'm, because we, yeah, we already have sides on the panel, so I am against this version I'm against the version of the government saying, um, you know, you feel uh, uh, bad, you feel bad for six months, and for any reason, uh, you can, you know, we're offering that service. I'm against that. And now we are discussing uh, a different version of events where somebody is terminally ill, and that can be proven, um, and they can prove it, um, and, uh, you know, and let's say the the service isn't even provided by the government, right? Let's keep that out of the question. And now we're comparing it to a slippery slope where somewhere in Europe where people are messed in the head, I would say in Netherlands and other countries where they're completely unhinged, where they have unhinged things going on. So if you want to talk about those, please translate how uh, this version uh, slips into the other version. Okay, we so your have. made up version that we're talking about right now versus the actual real things that I'm concerned with that I'm, I brought evidence of. Yeah, that we're already against. Like we we the they were debated before I came on, then they were debated after I came on, and I like I, I brought it back because I wanted to say my opinion on it, and then everybody repeated, and we, we're back there, but we're back there from a different argument. Like we can't move to the next one, which is <laughs> do, somebody uh, Prime tried to make it harder for you, which is. What if it's a case of a child and you know that they're suffering from like a great grave genetic condition that will likely kill them in six months, except they'll suffer? Can the parents decide um, to euthanize the child? Specifically, euthanasia was mentioned. And what would you see like the role of uh, private institutions or governments in that decision? Now, should it be investigated well, as a murder? Certainly... What's what's going on? Well, no. I, well, so, they certainly right. can do that. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't get to the answer the question. So they certainly can do that. But I would recommend. I would recommend strongly against it. I think they should let nature take its course because you never know miracles do happen. So I, I think that you should you should always you know try your best to see and hold out hope to see if things can improve. Right, but notice that Prime modified it. No, I won't say modified it. When I asked him for clarification, he was talking about infants. And that led me down the road of saying, well, look, sure, just as we had with medical assistance in dying um, or assisted, you know, physician-assisted suicide, we start out with these limits, right? In Prime's case, it was talking about infants that had these, you know, had terminal dis uh, diseases 
or extreme deformities or other conditions, right? Which would to each of us, right, would reasonably indicate that this this person is not going to live very long, not going to live a very satisfying, um, you know, life. So in this case, this might justify euthanasia. Uh, my uh, my argument against permitting infanticide and permitting killing infants like this uh, is is that this limit will not be a limit for very long. And it won't be a limit for very long, as we've already seen, because it's no longer now, for example, limited to just infants in Belgium, where there is no lower age limit, which means this this type of physician assisted killing uh, is legal, uh, you know, into adolescence right? and, and now through it and uh, preceding that to adulthood. Um, we see that in the Netherlands. And what we're seeing is with each one of these little chips at these limits, right, we see, as Germany has now determined, a right to die. And this gets back to the other panelists, you know, um, suggestion that, oh, well, this should be a process where they have to see a therapist or mental health professional. And it's like, well, wait, wait a second. Why? Why should the state compel them, right, to go through this process if this is a right? And that's where I see this, all of this heading is a determination that there is a right to die. Therefore, the state cannot get in the way of exercising that right. And soon it will be the argument the state has a obligation uh, to not just provide a legal framework for this for this to occur in, but must provide the service itself. If I agree, I, I I hope it doesn't go there because I don't super like the. I think that it should be fine for a doctor assisted uh, euthanasia or suicide for kids who have like really painful terminal illnesses and things, but I don't think that should be allowed for people with like mental health issues for kids because they're st their brains are still developing. I think that there's definitely way more opportunities to resolve that than there are with like a fully formed human who's like, their shit's pretty set. Um, and, the, and I think this, the, the even worse part here is that just like we do in the abortion debate where we tap dance on the 0.1% of of pregnancies that arise from sexual abuse um, or rape, right? We ought not to be using infants born with you know, these terminal diseases as a basis in order to argue for a right to die or to argue for an inherent um, a legal um, a preference to allow people to seek physician-assisted suicide. Again, because wherever we see physician-assisted suicide uh, legalized, we see more suicide, not just ass yeah. not just assisted, but we see more suicide generally. This is not a healthy uh, condition for society. I think society is not in a healthy state right now, and I don't think that it's changing fast enough to help a lot of the people who want to commit suicide. So while I think uh, the government has a responsibility to like help people if possible, it help its citizens. That's why I think they need to go through the processes of like surveys and seeing if there are other measures that can be taken to help them out of their current situation or like get rid of alleviate the reasons they want to die basically i do think that is the government's responsibility um but if they're not able to fulfill that then i don't think that people should um have to stay alive and right I think and as we see up in canada that, yeah the instance the, that isle uh, isle of isles referred to and is happening despite prime's protestations um we do see right governments are not going to provide 24-hour care uh seven days a week um 365 days a year uh, there are finite resources available. Uh, and consequently, when you have state endorsed, then physician assisted suicide or state endorsed suicide, right? Uh, you are presenting patients with a dilemma. Um, and and that, again, that's not a healthy thing for government to engage in. Our society may not be very healthy. That's one thing. But to then create or invent a obligation of government um, to uh, to not only endorse assisted suicide, uh, but then also to uh, to provide healthcare services to all citizens. Well, there are only finite resources to go around, and the state is going to choose not Debate to bar. or to. Debate bar. I'm going to need uh, some proof from you, right? Specifically, this claim that uh, Canada is um, saying that well, we have limited resources. And so since we can't uh, uh, help you because of some limited resources, that uh, we want you to die. That was uh, um, his claim, Al's claim. Like, yeah, if that's the claim that you're defending, 
then I need you to uh, produce that because uh, Al completely failed to produce that evidence. So the bait board didn't have I, evidence. I, I, you absolutely I failed. Hope. Don't try it. Don't try it. You I, failed it. You can anyone I can had, read your your I sources. You're rated. Whatever. Sorry, hold on. No, yeah, I'm, I'm moving uh, on. What I'm you're doing is on. your pet. Sorry, sorry. I, I was just saying I'm moving on from that. Like the bait board. Like if you have evidence of this, I like to see it. Yeah, no, there's no systemic uh, approach to this, right? Because the government isn't going to, um, isn't um, posted. I sent you a, a DM because I don't know how to post in VC chat. I'm too old for that. Um, no, the, the government isn't advertising that it is giving, um, it is giving citizens a uh, left or right hand choice, right? No, because it's a case by case consideration. And we do see these cases arising. Um, and it isn't singular, right? And and I know what's going to happen here, right? Is like, well, one isn't enough. And then once once ten is provided, then the argument will be, well, it's not widespread. And then when a far larger number is provided, then the argument will suddenly or magically transform to, well, wait a second, the government can provide these medical services to you know all citizens in all conditions, so it has to. Uh, allocate resources uh, in some other way. So, uh, it, of course, it's appropriate then to provide some patients with a choice. Um, you know, the there's a dis difference between um, there's a difference between individuals rejecting care provided by the state and care in a weird way, care being distributed to patients to help them die, right? Um, and you know, when the state engages in helping people, helping to kill people. And that's not what we ought to be encouraging. So uh, that's that's where I'm at. I think that it's kind of like an odd argument to make to be like, the state doesn't have enough resources. So instead of letting people die while they're waiting for like a lack of resources and keep them in pain, we just shouldn't give them that option. I feel like that's like exactly the problem is that there's like, if there's not enough resources and we hope and wish that there were, and maybe it'll eventually change. That still means that somebody is having to sit and suffer during that interim time and endure that when they may not have to and may not want to. Well, but what does, how does that though create an obligation of the state though, to be the provider of this? I think because the state has a responsibility to its citizens and I think providing a... Well, what responsibility does it have to kill you? Not to kill you well, necessarily, gave, but I think, wait, wait, let me finish well, my, let me finish right. my point, we'll, okay? I All think right. that the state is normally here to mitigate harm to its its citizens. And I think that mitigating the harm of like maybe a suicidal person like damaging their family by trauma by committing suicide at home or just by being fucked up and depressed and in pain all the time. Like the collateral damage alone I think is a good enough reason, but also just the individual damage to a person if that can be mitigated, I feel like it's it should be. We have the resources. We have the technology. It's it's literally just moralization that makes us people not. Well, yeah, no, but wait, isn't but killing them? I don't think killing somebody who's suicidal is mitigating the harm. That's exacerbating it and terminating no. it. No, no, because no, like if you were a, no. mitigating the harm, you would actually figure out why they're suicidal and so, then try to somebody, so can I, can I, somebody like, whose lives can be answer? saved. If somebody can be trained to live with whatever problems that they have, right? If somebody can can be reformed and mm -hmm. and brought back to life through various interventions that are not used by the government because the government uh, doesn't believe this particular government has an ideological component uh, that it also promotes, and so it doesn't promote various alternatives that exist. Um, yes, that that is actually an increase in harm. Um, mm -hmm. And any time that when we're talking about cases of euthanasia, that's a separate debate. What you're saying is literally when people feel bad. Now, if you lack resources, then you have many government agencies that are frivolous and can be shut down, including in Canada tomorrow. You can shut down all of the media channels that are paid by the government. All of those guys that produce the advertising that you agree that it's bad to advertise for you know, this type of, of assistance, right? Where um, uh, a healthy looking woman that just... Uh, um, you know, that has a, some potential uh, um, problems in the future and she's advertising for that or the cases where, where you, adver you are talking about, like all of that could have been, all of that funding could have been thrown out, uh, reduced from taxation or uh, moved over to, you know, pay for veteran services 
uh, through uh, private vouchers. That particular that lovely, person is that going that to particular time person to harm is he getting to those to people who are suffering? In the, in the yes, yes. That, if we do it now, yeah, that person could 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 that, that person get a voucher where they decide what to buy for themselves to make their lives better? You know, that maybe be that's great. the solution. I'm maybe you shouldn't in wait. Favor of all those things, I think universal basic income would be a great thing too. I think there are a ton of solutions, but they if they aren't here yet. We're still forced. They are here to yet. Wait in the meantime. I, but but they are. are. No, no, they, they they are here. You have you, the problem is that you believe you said earlier that you believe that the government is. Here. You don't have to be a wizard to make delicious iced coffee at home. Hmm. Wow, that's good. It never gets old. <laughs> Want me to do it again? Nothing. Introducing Dunkin' Cold Coffee that stands up to ice. Here to help. And unfortunately, that's the ideal. But the reality is that the government is there to, pr to have people uh, get promoted in their careers. And the way they get promoted in their careers is that they spend resources. And the way the incentive structure works is not that they spend resources to effectively help other people. That's like um, maybe uh, you know, in the back of somebody new to the government, in the back of, the back of their minds. But anyone that, sur that actually survives within the system uh, their incentives becomes to spend and to spend in such a way that they get more funds next time, or at least not less. And that's where you get the corruption in the system. You get like distortions where they don't actually need to allocate money effectively. That's never a, a component of their mission. And it can't be. And, and that's why you, um, in every single system, if you look at uh, any system that tries to improve it, like in Europe, it, People often mention Scandinavian countries. Everything is moved towards vouchers given to individuals with which the individuals decide uh, what to do. You, you know, it's and it's not a universal basic income because it, uh, it is still a redistribution system that targets specifically people in need. Uh, but the other thing you can do is uh, you can reduce uh, um, you can reduce uh, taxation overall so that uh, and you can. Even more importantly, you can reduce regulation on various markets that keeps people poor, like uh, keeps people poor yeah, by over-regulating various supplies. All of these things, I still, like, they are not currently happening right now, and there are currently people suffering who may not want to continue suffering and waiting for those to happen. Yeah, but they're suffering because of that government. It's because the government okay, restricts yeah, construction of buildings in, in Canada. That's an entirely separate problem. And I, I, it sounds like we agree no, on this. It's, it's not a separate problem. problem. It's like the government problem. causes a lot of issues. And instead of solving those issues so that more people are, less people are suicidal, we instead have this new government agency that solves the problem in cases where no diseases exist. No, I disagree because just earlier, uh, somebody was saying for like chronic pain and mental health issues, like I, I, that we, I we think... can use taxpayer money to do things to help mitigate them so they're no longer suicidal. We don't need to kill them. We could do things with the government taxation money to do other things to help them okay, with their so pain and make them not suicidal. Can I offer like a personal anecdote earlier? Because my particular chronic nerve pain disorder is called trigeminal neuralgia. It's uh, colloquially known as the suicide disease. I have the atypical type, thankfully, which means it's intermittent. There are some people who are in constant pain and trigeminal, like neurologic pain on your trigeminal nerve is some of the worst pain you can experience. And it's also famously resistant to most pain medications and treatments. There are some surgeries, they're not guaranteed to work. There are plenty of people I know in various like spaces I'm, I am online who have tried um, two different, two or three different surgeries, have tried dozens of medications and they're basically, their doctors are just like, you're just going to live in pain forever every single day, or you're just going to be high on drugs all the time every single day. Like, your life is going to be so narrow and limited. And I feel like, even though they're still alive, that's not like, if they don't want to live that existence, they shouldn't be forced to live in pain and have, like, such a small life just because the government doesn't want to help them, you know? That's a good, that's a good shift from the position that you initially took. And no, I agree I that in those shift. cases, shift? I'll explain. Those are those are really tragic cases where there is a mm -hmm. disease where the person um, can prove that they're suffering from chronic pain and can be somehow recorded. Oh, so the issue and is then, that and then we're, health issues can't prove their distress because that's fucked up. Yes, because because again, because mental distress is not equivalent to what you're describing. 
And and even in your case, I would I think fight it can even. Be. Otherwise, for, people wouldn't commit suicide. I, I would so. fight even for your case because advancement in technology all, uh, uh, are are very rapid, and there's advancements no, okay. in painkillers. No, that, new that are, surgeries has, have come out for this in years. Can, I've had this for well, seven years, and no, then let's there's exclude been one that case. Thing, and it doesn't. Okay. But Do you that, agree no, to no, accept that case? that case? Because you're saying you're saying. No, I want to exclude it. Why? Why can't? Why because shouldn't we exclude I, because it? Because I think this helps illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. No, it, it doesn't. Hypothetically, it does. would you accept because it in other cases? You're saying, wait, I don't think so, because this illustrates why not. You're still telling a person who only has pain to look forward to to wait until a medical advancement might happen. There's nothing guaranteed. Well, no, we're, that, we're saying. I'm, I'm and, willing and, to exclude and, that and, case, and, and, but Alohan, you're not answering all the here's, others. Here's the problem with excluding the case, right? Um, is that, like, that is, like, the point. Like, what she's describing is the very point like uh so i had never heard of her uh, uh ailment and i'm sorry that you're going through that um but like that it's those ailments that the public has never heard of that don't make big money those types of ailments will not like it will it's very doubtful that there's yeah, going to be the, the investment into figuring out how to help them right and it's not diabetes it's not aids it's not all those um uh well-known banner diseases right it's 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 a uh, uh a, a rare uh genetic thing that happened to her so uh to say that well you know science is advancing right that means nothing it means absolutely yeah. nothing in that case yeah mm -hmm. in, uh, and the reason why she brought in this particular case that i agreed to fight on it a little bit but i'm willing to exclude it by basically conceding it because her actual position is is many other cases that are not like that. When we ask the question, if we exclude all chronic diseases from the discussion and just agree with you about chronic diseases, and we talk about non-chronic things like mental health, like things that are potentially chronic, potentially not, and that are very uh, difficult to prove key. empirically either way, and are definitely not something where somebody registers living in constant pain, just they just uh, suffer from chronic depression, uh, that uh, they uh, we don't know which uh, um, you know uh, which types of of medication or lifestyle changes that that uh, they've they've attempted and in those cases you would still support uh, you know uh, this these types of procedures so let's so let's talk about those hard like a cases couple things you just said yeah that that you don't know what lifestyle changes that they've tried to make or whether they've tried to address it i think that's again the reason for the screening but also i really take issue with the fact that you're like depression isn't agony or painful that people kill themselves because they're depressed because it is well, misery it could, well no depression could be painful if there yeah. are there are some some you know psychomatic uh, things that yeah. happen to you like i think There's a huge correlation, like yeah. lower back pain i sometimes suffer from that as well um mm -hmm. but you know that is that is a difference from like this you know a physiological debilitating disease like you suffered from like intermittently i think there's a different there's there's a difference there between something that um is a uh actual uh like stability slash like illness that is literally killing you um or, or I mean, not, not killing you it's like it's literally, literally targeting, pain, targeting otherwise i'm health. totally healthy yeah so, there's a difference I mean, between yeah, pain and <laughs> psychological <laughs> conditions yes though we do the yeah, same I, difference I, right? I, I big don't, difference don't, because i think it's a difference but sorry go ahead Holly. yeah Alyssa, i went through five years of crippling depression in my late 20s <clears throat> and you could not have convinced me that it would ever go away because five years feels like forever when you're in the middle of it. Um, and but then uh, I, I made a very drastic lifestyle change. And I understand a lot of times it's chemical, a lot of times it's physiological. It, it's not always about lifestyle, but in my case it was. And I never would, you couldn't have convinced me that just making those kinds of changes that I made to get out of it would have such a dramatic effect, but I haven't had a bad day since, uh, and it's been over about 25 years uh, since that. And no matter like what like hardships I might go through, um, like uh, it, it just I feel I I don't feel the way I did back then, and so like it's like a night and day difference. But you could not have convinced me at that time that that was a possibility because my outlook just couldn't go uh, beyond uh, the pain that I was feeling. So in my case, uh, depression wasn't chronic, but I felt that it was chronic at the time. And um, I think that's one of the problems with uh, mental illness is that um, it's very difficult to convince somebody who's in it 
uh, that there might be like they might ever be in a different state because it really does feel like it's you know that 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 there's nothing beyond. Well, then let uh, me ask you something. Something you're feeling, yeah. Um, uh, and for the sake of this argument, let's say that your problem was chemical, right? Rather yeah. than just like like changing your mindset right. or whatever this went through. Right. Um, right. Right. Uh, so if it was chemical and we somehow knew at the start of it that it would take you 10 years, right, to get over it, whether it be like a 10 year in 10 years of the treatment or in 10 years, your brain chemistry changes so that you're all good. Right. Um, uh, should it be the case that someone uh, uh, can decide, well, I'm not going to go through that 10 years of torture, that maybe it is temporary, but 10 years of, of what you experienced um, like that like question. it's just too much yeah well you, yeah. you guys don't have uh, any way to evaluate this this problem and to make such decisions because it used to be that when we uh you know when the majority of people were deeply religious and christian they could say uh, you know suicide is a sin and therefore you should suffer for 10 years because the rest of your life is more valuable to god and it, because it's a grave sin you shouldn't do it you had that standard now you don't have that standard. And I don't know by which standard do you judge that? Do you judge, oh, I shouldn't suffer for 10 years? Like, how? You, it's not something you can even calculate. Maybe you have children in 10 years. Maybe you have a happy family. Uh, should those children not deserve their lives? Like, how do you what do that? Nonsense. How do you ask that's, that question of someone? What a terrible that's argument. That's why I think it should be up it's, to it's, each individual person to decide whether argument. they want to, like, and gamble people, on it getting argument. better. They may. Nobody should be forced to endure, like, with just like the hope that something might get better, but no guarantee or no knowledge that it will. But like the definitive, like this suffering is going to continue unless something changes. I think his point is in part, here, let me see if we're talking about the case. Larger point is that there are, we lack uh, robust and sufficient tools to properly diagnose a whole range of, uh, of, I don't know if we can even call them disorders because it's mainly symptoms symptoms of depression, for example, that we can identify. And yet we're trying to somehow transform things like anorexia and depression into things that are comparable and equivalent to terminal disease conditions. When we lack the actual tools to properly diagnose many of these disorders that are, that are now popularly called disorders by the, mental, by the mental health industry. Anorexia absolutely can be terminal. Have you not seen people like literally your organs start shutting down? Well, yeah, because yes, uh, they're and not eating. But that can be yes. a result <laughs> of, yeah, that will be of anorexia. the condition of anorexia. Yeah. That is a result of a person's decision to do something. Yes? Yeah, I mean, because that's, that's, that's when sleeping not to eat. The issue they have. Right? Yeah, like, don't hurt. We should be anorexia. Yeah. Eat. 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 Uh -huh. so, yeah, someone can help you eat. There's, there's a difference eat. between the so amount of agency necessary then. to, like, resist anorexia versus the amount of agency necessary to resist, like, a cancer, right? We we, we know this. We we know that there's, a, there's an ability. Um, but that's even decisive from the point. Like, shouldn't we just be talking about why does anybody have the right to remove somebody's like ability to end their life if they want to? It's their life. Mm -hmm. like, why, wait, why are we wait, making wait this argument yeah, about, about like approval and disapproval? We're not. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You own it. It said the government what, you. what is this word right so that you're using? Tell you is the question. I'm we're not. It's not the part gonna... right. Hmm? See, this is very. Be very careful, right? There's two things being discussed. Uh, this particular case is that you go to a government and the government. Uh, says, oh, you're depressed. By the way, we have this treatment called medically assisted ending your life. By the way, so that's what we're talking about. It's advertising a government service. Um, if we were talking about a person having the ability to end their life, well, obviously we don't have, you know, this, we have a statistic of this happening all the time where people do it themselves. And we also discussed earlier that What's you going can buy on? a variety of devices How are we from doing? firearms to, you know, chambers to do it uh, on your own dime at your own home. And it should be investigated every time as a potential murder or a suicide. And that's the, the role of, you know, local law enforcement. But, sure. but that is not what we're discussing. We're not discussing, we're not forbidding people. We're not going into the homes and putting people in institutions that are suicidal uh, against their will. That's not what's happening. What's happening is we, people we are, are we, you, can, you can make a call. You can make a uh, like a, a, a welfare check. That that is like a thing. But 
the not point I'm making is suicide. even about that. Sorry. If you're going to spend money and do and because what is a gun different from a hospital? A gun is still a product, a commodity that exists because the state allows it to exist. Everything that exists in the market as an option to end your life exists there because the state allows it. So are we going to let people jump? Well, I don't think the my fucking... oh, oh, let, 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 There's let, a difference let, between the let, gun let, and the doctor. I do want to hear the what doctor swears an oath and the gun oh is just God. an object. I do want to hear what Tuna Chip has to say. Tuna Chip, is, uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Um, hey, not yeah. a problem. Yeah, uh, please we had, go uh, ahead. We had the panel before. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with your stuff. We, we did the, uh, we did the, uh, the uh, what is it? The um, dog whistle. Uh, oh. the panel, the uh, window, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. We did, we did. Well, I'm happy that you're here. Yeah, you know, uh, what you, you, it's, it's not familiar because what we don't have. Um, what do we have? You know, do this or something. We could, we could put like the, the uh, yeah. pretty based. Okay, but um, no. Uh, the point I'm saying is that the ability to kill yourself, it, it's always present. It's like an innate feature that most people have. Some people don't have due to disability, but. By and large, suicide is available to a majority of the people that are going to apply for it, right? And if they're going to do this by defenestration, if they're going to jump into the traffic, if they're going to run in front of it, we know that there are different ways that are more socially disruptive. And if we can offer a service, shut your goddamn head shaking. There are ways that are more no, socially disruptive no. than putting grandma into a little fucking – into a permanent sleep. There's something you, more socially disruptive no, than here. How about no, this one? Another one. My, it doesn't even have, 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 have to be terminal illness. If you do, you have, do you see the distinction reason, between somebody doing something themselves life, and the nurse doing it? The government should have a clean and honest way to do that. That doesn't create like all of this social it's tension. It's not honest. Mm -hmm. It's not clean. It's gross and disgusting and immoral. It's gross and disgusting you because feel. you're a moralist. That's such a silly it doesn't care about. It's not how we feel. You you're equivocating between life. a tool between somebody buying a chamber that that chamber is just a tool that they use. It's not something that has a consciousness. It's not something that has interests. It's not something that engages in politics. It's just a piece of hardware. And you're comparing that to a nurse and to a doctor that should swear an oath. And their oath is do no harm. And unless you're suffering from a condition that is guaranteed to kill you, then ending your life is, is the surgery? most clearest harm possible. What is surgery? Uh, answer this for me. What is surgery? If not harmful, but harmful for the point of achieving an end that is understood exactly. as being a beneficial end. To save your life, and if surgeries resulted in deaths, we would investigate them as murders. If the people surgeries don't result die, in, in final conditions, then it's a successful procedure. Yeah, I literally when a doctor kills that somebody, we investigate it like a murder. Procedure. It's about matching the end with the intention. It's not about, oh my God, we yeah, need we Can you engage with the possible. argument? Can you engage with the argument? Lie. Can you explain how you compared a gun or a chamber to a nurse and a doctor? Do you not recognize the difference between a tool and a tool user? That when you give someone else the right to do something to a citizen, that's different than the citizen having the right to do it to themselves? Do you not see the difference? The Can you engage with the difference a little that's bit? Very, recognize that, there, that it is. Okay. nearly going around fucking murdering people because they want to. But you, uh, what you're saying there's to? going to be a you're government agency doing it, and you're saying it's the same as, a, as a tool society. doing it. Can you recognize the difference? Can you acknowledge the I argument? It's probably here? better that a human is doing it than a tool, unless that tool is specifically designed for it. I think it's better to have a nurse do it than somebody shooting themselves in the head or jumping in front of a train. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, debate. I want to I give debate for a, a, a chance. Sure. Iko, you never answered the question I was going to ask you previously. That. Um, but, Thanks, Prime. Hey, yeah. uh, first of all, we, we we have to start with you know, look, Prime Prime has always been right, and I'm I'm simply intellectually lacking when it you know when compared to Prime. So glad um, you came by, to that realization. By the way, I had to say that under duress, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten another <laughs> chance to talk again. But nonetheless, um, I, I think Tuna Chip here engaged in a little bit of uh, intellectual base stealing as he posited from the start that there is a quote unquote right. Uh, to uh, to assisted suicide. Um, may, maybe I misunderstood him, but I have to imagine that we must be perverting or bastardizing the word right here, um, uh, you know, and, and trying to give it the same, uh, trying to attribute it to the same kind of status as the, the right to free speech or the exercise of religion. Um, and of course, we know that no such right to die exists, and we wouldn't want it to. 
Um, but nonetheless, we would um, want it to. Are you insane? People want no. it. That's why the conversation's even happening because people mm -hmm. actively want the right to be able to yeah. end their life. Mm -hmm. No, see, no, no. What they want the right to is either the state to perform the service for them or a doctor who may not otherwise choose to do so, or we uh, permit a for profit industry. And we, as we see for the for profit palliative care industry, it sucks. All right. And and it, we open our we open the door to all sorts of abuses, such as we see under the Oregon law, where there have been rampant abuses since 1994 when it was passed. All right. Now, this this whole idea of um, rather than letting somebody jump off a bridge to kill themselves and having some sort of negative social effects, what we can guess at those. But what we do know, as a matter of fact, is that after um, uh, after euthanasia and or assisted suicide laws are introduced, we see rates of assist. With Premier Protein Powders, you can mix up your Mondays, Sundays, post runs, and hey, just for fun. These powders are packed with 30 grams of protein and have one gram of sugar in flavors that can make every day taste amazing and every goal feel deliciously within reach. So start mixing things up and stirring and whirring and baking and making. From your protein, sweeten the journey. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Suicide increase, and not just a little bit, but significantly. We see the rates of self-initiated deaths, which is essentially assisted suicide plus non-assisted suicide, also increase significantly. We see an increase in self-initiated death is disproportionately higher uh, in certain groups like women. Why is that the case? Because assisted suicide does one thing, and that is devalue the value of life. It is a government endorsing, right? The devaluing of human life. And once we say, hey, everybody has a right to die and the, and the government has a, an obligation to provide that service, we're telling everybody that their life just isn't worth very much. And that's not compassion, that's not care. I don't think that compassion has to be the point of the state. So this is an understate, this is a fundamental disagreement me and you seem to have. When we understand, okay, why does the government and the state get to exist in the way that it does against the will of the people in certain instances why are there laws because why do the we people it? want it because we understand the that that the right? Again, let me i just want to finish my point the, mm -hmm. we understand that the state acts as an emboldening effect where we sacrifice certain rights in order for them to embolden our our fundamental aims now when it comes down to uh like the existence of taxation, what goes into medicine in order to allow us to live in instances where we would otherwise die due to disease. It's easy to look at that and say, okay, this is good because it's making more life, but it's only good because it's making more life that wishes to continue being. If somebody doesn't want to live, then it would be most symmetrical to assist them in no longer living in whatever way is easiest. I don't actually think that it's bad when more people are dead. I don't get why you think that. It's not innately bad. People wait, either wait, want to be who, alive who or they that? don't. The thing I that mean. matters more than anything else is whether or not a person has ownership over that right, whether or not it is taken away. Because then at that point, your agency no longer belongs to you. Every action has to go through it. What are you going to do when you want to be alive? Someone's trapped being alive. The state w says, we're not going to let you. Uh, we're not going to let you do this in a way that feels humane. Go find a bridge. If you're crippled, go find somebody who's willing to put the syringe in you that doesn't work for the government. And we're not going to allow private industries to do it. So make sure you do it in a dark fucking alleyway. That's not a fucking oh, better. Oh, the, the back alley abortion argument. No, the, those the, are good. The, the, I mean, the point I think here. it's pretty fucking valid, though. <laughs> yeah, what, it's what it's very valid. valid. Nobody you, argued here yet, that. except. All of Not everybody here argues against the private option. I offered the private option from the very start. 
uh, but I told it you that it should like be it should be handled like happened. somebody providing you with a tool. It cannot be somebody providing you with a direct service because that has to be investigated as a murder and you have issues with that. If this is something that the person could do on their own, that's their right, but that's the extent of their right. Don't extend their right to a government program that is offered to them as something that the government provides. That's a completely different interpretation. That becomes then a positive right, that you must have this. Uh, this is ridiculous. And also you keep bringing in bridges, like uh, as if, br you know, look into the statistics of the most common methods. We can't really quote them. I don't bridges care, are just the a complete is red herring. Has to clean up so, so your whole point yeah. is to confuse the purpose of the government here and to and to completely ignore the risks that are being raised to you. You're like you don't even want to address them. And again, you dodged and you failed to address your false comparison between the tool, the method. And an actual person having the right to do so hey, with some hey, paperwork. I'll tell you right now. Hey, let's let's answer a couple of things. Number one, the idea that there's a problem with the private industry to apply it directly, that that then needs to be investigated as a murder, is solved with the public option, right? It's solved no, by the state. Not. The people that do the investigation, the people that do it, are able to be in direct contact, and they are able to have the fucking. Uh, legislative structure that allows us to decide how these things should work and shouldn't work. So that's why the public option, that's that's why it exists. It solves that problem. Now, the other comparison, you want to talk about this idea, is it, uh, I'm not believing that somebody should be forced to end somebody's life. If you're a doctor, should you be forced? No, I think that all doctors should be allowed to turn down uh, actions like giving a circumcision, engaging in euthanasia, engaging in abortion. Those are things that people as doctors should be allowed to say no to. There are plenty enough people that are gonna say yes and they're gonna be working for the state and they're gonna be able to do those services. It's not fucking crazy. You don't have to pretend that one change happens and other changes can't come with it. If you wanna make it so that we have a public option that doctors can opt out of being able to offer that service, that's a fine way to do it as well. I don't think that this comparison where you're thinking that I'm trying to force doctors and nurses to apply something that is against their ethics. They don't have to. So that's not a dodge. That's just you having this obsession with the current. No, state no, it, it is a dodge because you How believe that dodge? there's you, you believe that there's a magic word called public. That in, in immediately eliminates all corruption, elim immediately eliminates all political <laughs> or, or profit corrupt. incentive. It's like a magical care. thing that if you call it oh, public, it suddenly becomes this oh, holy corruption. Are we so this is subject, and this is why you're passing out right now. This is why you're interrupting right. right now after you've been allowed to speak for a long time because Sorry, your bubble is being stop. burst, <laughs> and you react to that bubble being burst by being aggressive. By responding with aggression, which <laughs> proves that human nature is actually stronger than rationality, no, uh, right? No, and then the government is just as subject to irrational behavior, okay, and gov no. government supporters and and statist advocates like you are just I'm as capable of being advocate, irrational. And including the, the nurse that that performs the injection is also capable of being irrational or thinking, you oh, how 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 many promotions I will get from executing like... people that could have been otherwise saved, right? <laughs> Tuna is a filthy status uh, confirmed. Uh, so uh, what are you going to say? He uh, is a literal mean, anarchist uh, libertarian. You're oh, fucking insane. The idea uh, that it's oh, a status wait, position to say that, that people should be allowed to end their life. Uh, Pep, you want to say something? You and then I want him daily more. Sorry. Kill you. Okay. Uh, Tuna so, Chips, that was you who did that, Tuna Chips. Excuse me? Well, so I'll oh, I did have you? one thing to say, actually. Um, okay. I don't think the bridge is a red herring. As somebody who lives in the Bay Area, people kill themselves in front of our public transit system and jump off the bridge, and it takes so many resources away from, like, actual emergencies that, like, this could have been avoided, and some other emergencies can't be avoided. So I do think that it would be beneficial overall. Give me uh, the numbers. Give trains, me the statistics. Uh, trains trains so, stop for hours and, and uh, yeah. cause people to be late to work where I'm at all the time. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. it's something we constantly have to deal with. Same thing with me. So usually what we're, we're hearing here... Today. What we're hearing so here is that right. let's kill people so that your commute is more convenient. Right. I agree. This is the if utility they're already argument. Gonna if they die, I would want... rather them do it in a way that's less harmful to everyone. On their own, no, without the government's harmful, assistance. Though. Yes. Oh, no to the death penalty oh and no to government no, assisted doing it on their suicide. Own doesn't, doesn't what is the highway? That it's not going to have collateral damage. Doing it alone and like almost always ensures that no, somebody see, has to find the body. There's going to be collateral damage. 
See, the, the pers here's a problem with the discussion, right, is we have some people arguing from the individual perspective, um, like our, our fellow panelist here with, a, uh, with uh, her ailment, right? Um, and that to most of us, it would seem to be uh, appropriate and reasonable to say, yeah, she should be able to, uh, if she so chooses, to uh, end her life, right? Um, however, what we do know is that when government endorses assisted suicide, which is just really legalized killing, we ought to we ought to avoid the euphemisms um but when we have the government endorsing this we have the government intrinsically devaluing life telling people uh that their your your life is not worth protecting your life is not worth protecting you from suicide this is why we have now an italian man right being allowed to uh, get assisted suicide because he was paralyzed or to uh, or a a ethics journal arguing that someone's suffering from years long anorexia uh, now magically transform into terminal anorexia being allowed to get uh, uh, assisted suicide there is no limits here right and that's what we're hearing for is an unabashed advocacy for an unlimited right to die and not only that but that the government has a positive or affirmative obligation to facilitate that. And that's the intellectual step that's being stolen here, right? The invention of a right, and then and then just kind of the disguised thing that, oh, taxpayers ought to be on a hook for it because you know what? If, if taxpayers don't subsidize it, then my morning commute's gonna be disrupted. That's nonsense, that's bullshit. That's, that's just bad logic and that's rationale. Just, okay, this feels a little bit bad faith because it's not just my morning dis commute is gonna be- That's what you said. Well, no, that of course, was I'm one of on the that, facets. It's an easy There's target. train drivers who are who are traumatized. The people who have to clean it up are traumatized. Some people have, I bet, lost jobs because they the were late. Children and thing. passengers are traumatized. Yup. And not just, uh, the people that have to wipe it off the ground work for the people state. Who do that. And the money children and adults are traumatized the every day. Public. By all sorts of things. Right? They're traumatized when their pronoun isn't used. So oh, let's, let's, get let's get off the let's get off the trauma. Take an artisanal tortilla, add some fire grilled pollo perfection, maybe a little slow braised beef. Grill, dip, eat, and repeat. New local burrito grillers, only from El Pollo Loco. Feed the flame. I was thinking of spending some time as Iron Man, with thrusters for feet and hands like cannons. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> A a trainer, okay? Oh my god. Bro. Yeah, actually I have. I, I've actually oh, had to. True. That, that, I, no, I, I disagree. Very, if very if both sides start yelling, think of the children, I think we'll have a better debate. Uh, <laughs> Why? We're, uh, we're already, I, we're already think euthanizing of the children. children. Let's I mean, go to... Um, slaughtering babies. Hey, Coconut, did the... you have something to say? You've been quiet. And then Aiko, who's been... Uh, I love to hear stuff from his mouth. Coconut? Coconut. Okay, well, uh, we'll see. Away. Yeah, uh, coconut. Yeah, there's a way. Um, let's going on there? go to, um, uh, yeah, Aiko. Uh, yeah, I forgot the question you asked me, but um, <laughs> I'll just say uh, when I think of this conversation, like, I, I mean, I, I'm not all the way where, where these two guys are, but I, but I do – I find myself sympathizing with uh, Casimir and debate for to probably to a larger degree than I do the other side. Uh, because I, you know, what springs to my head uh, the most are uh, Aldous Huxley's brave new world. When you, know, you have that death appreciation class that's go that, that goes on in that uh, book or Logan's run when, you know, where everyone's supposed to report to the suicide center at, a, at, at 30 because, they're told that the life after that is just going to get more painful and it's not worth living. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I do think that we have to deal with the possibility of the sort of mission creep that goes on when it comes to these sorts of things. And I think maybe one of the hard breaks for this is you shouldn't advertise it. You shouldn't um, positively suggest it uh, in the hospitals, that sort of thing. That said, I think, you know, consent is important and I try to like consider consent on all of these decisions. And even though I um, am not a fan of assisted suicide just as a concept, I think, you know, 
uh, to force people to continue living, I think at some point we do need to consider their consent. So um, I just think that we need uh, to think hard about where the brakes are and how we stop um, how we stop ever broadening the qualifications for this kind of assistance. I do have to hop off here, so I will say goodbye. See Take you, care, Desperado. All. Hey, Thanks see you, Des. Bye, Desperado Sensei. I, I think Take most care. people probably have an inherent objection to the all of the above assisted suicide advocacy that we're hearing. Right. We we try to dress it up with euphemisms. We try to dress it up with, well, there should be, you know, at least six months of of you know mental health care and which seems to be um which seems to be ironic because what's really being argued for is an absolute right to die and if that's the case then why why muck it all up with with visits to the doctor and visits to the mental health professional um and, look they said that i couldn't do it so the absolute right to die and, which is really no, you know advocated. i've been on a I mean, there is, in a sense, okay, let's sort get of pre-existing. I mean, Living we've always denial. had the ability to kill ourselves in one way or another. Sure. Um, and, and there's really no way to stop that from happening. I mean, the question here really is, to what degree can we advocate for assistance? Um, and certainly when it comes to chronic pain and when it comes to uh, end-of-life care issues and things like that, I think that there are discussions to be had. Like I said, in my family, we had one of those discussions for you know a very dramatic uh, week. So um, when those discussions come up, I think I think there is a lot of um, room for back and forth talks, and I think that the, these decisions, I mean, it gets messy, and I think it's really hard to say, especially when you're dealing in these individual cases. It's really hard to like have a hard and fast rule that's going to apply to each one of those very different cases with highly different contexts associated with them. It's very easy to sort of characterize them as a group, especially, um, you know, if you're trying to come in with an ideology. And I have one too, like, you know, I'm Catholic. I, I have a sort of natural um, uh, bias, you know, uh, 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 against ending a life. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't know the context of each one of those situations. And so that conversation between the patient and the doctor um, has should uh, probably override what my opinion is uh, on a, especially since I'm looking at the thousand foot level at, um, you know, innumerable cases over time. But these families are dealing with a single case and they're consulting with their priest like I did, or they're consulting with, um, their doctor or their other family members and they're having these discussions and they're talking about somebody, somebody that they love and they don't want to see in pain. And I certainly think that um, the decisions that they make outrank any decision I could make from my distance. Wait, see, can y'all hear me now? I, I go, Rick. Yeah. I, I like what I'm you. hearing. Okay. Sorry? We can hear him. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Casimir. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I liked what I hear, and and I hope the discussion moves there because um, you've outlined a system that's independent from you, that has been relatively stable for hundreds of years, that has a book that writes down what the priorities are, and so uh, we know like that sort of what um, uh, ideals uh, are being promoted, uh, and uh, if. Uh, if the government was bound by such a book or bound by such ideals, uh, like the then I would know. Uh, one moment, then I would know um, uh, what to expect from that government, uh, because uh, it, it would, it would, if it would be written in the constitution uh, that uh, suicide and and uh, that suicide and other anti-life activities are immoral and should be discouraged, even if they are a right. Um, then we would have a different expectation. However, our government, um, for better or worse, uh, is uh, morality neutral to a great extent. It's neutral on those topics. And if we, um, uh, a great segment in our society has abandoned you know, religion as a standard, they should offer their new standard. Because without that standard, how can they promise us that what... Uh, um, what the other person here, what debate bore is saying is not going to come to pass. Now, I criticized debate bore earlier 
is that I want him to demonstrate the slippery slope in some cases. Uh, but hypothetically, if I start asking hypotheticals from tuna chip, hypothetically, can this be the end uh, case where life is just not valid? Or if I ask tuna chip, uh, for what reason do you value life? You know, is that like an arbitrary decision that can change tomorrow on like a on a societal level? Uh, I would want to have an answer. I like Ike Rick because he has that answer. We can disagree on policy, but we both at least value the same things. What do you yeah, value and why? Yeah, and I think that it is important in these questions, and we run into this in the world of academic debate all the time, the difference between uh, what one ought to do, like what is your uh, moral responsibility versus what you should be allowed to do. And so people all the time have the right to do to make decisions that one that that I personally might feel are immoral decisions, but that doesn't mean I don't recognize that they have the right to make that decision. And so, to make that decision between ought and allowed, uh, I think it's important things like this to know. Uh, Coconut, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I think I've heard a couple of people say this, that they wouldn't mandate the doctors to perform these types of procedures. But I think you would have to if you're saying that this is a service that the government has to provide. Um, so like, I don't you think know, the you, government should provide it. That's the, yeah, that's but the, that's I'm, the I'm talking to the people who are saying that the government should. But what I'm saying is, you know, if you have a 20 year old person who's otherwise healthy and they want to kill themselves and the doctor says, no, I don't want to do this. What then? How does this person get to exercise this right that you say they have? Well, then you have to make the doctor do it. You can't no, you give the, the doctor the option to not. Yeah, do it. exactly. You go window shopping. Mm -hmm. Like you don't. No, go no, to this is your right. Surgeon. You don't just go no. to any surgeon for cosmetic surgery. Many people won't do it. Oh my God! Like, no, this is no. Like the oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, wait, 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 wait. wait. No, no, no. The way y'all talked though. about it earlier, you said that you had a designated doctor. To perform these services just like a hospice nurse is that correct so the doctor who's designated to perform your assisted suicides you're 20 years old you're young and healthy and this doctor says i don't want to do it you go to that doctor then what if you're saying that this is a government uh sponsored you know program and this is your right then the doctor has to perform that no go no. find a different one <laughs> We're not proposing. You're, you're, we're not proposing. Okay. Well, uh, okay, well what if the doctors idea. don't? Well, you, how many doctors do you have to go to? As many as it takes until you find one that consents. Have we? Okay, uh, so then you don't. Then you don't agree. This is a right that you have and that the doctor should have to do it. If My that's opinion your is that everybody – so I don't think that it's a right that it needs that it needs to be given by the government. My opinion is that if two people want to do something, if one person wants to offer somebody money in exchange for the service of ending their life, no one should be allowed to get in the way of that. That's my position. Yeah. Then why should it be the government? Why can't it just be like your buddy? Because the government currently the has an yeah. ownership of those like instruments of investigating of whether or not something is not corrupt. Ownership. Something. The they slavery the is confirmed. What is corrupt? The mask well, is done. No, they, they have the power. So, gentlemen, have we looked at the class angle of this? Have we have we spoken on the class angle of this? Because I feel that's a very important point or very important angle to be analyzing this from. Because if you're specifically looking, and I'm guessing it's the Canadian government example that's got everyone, you know, up in arms out of nowhere. And uh, you like, you can very clearly see with the Canadian example that you know when it is being pushed on people, um, you know, maybe beyond the bounds of good taste. Uh, it is routinely upon people who are uh, led into misery in life, not because of sort of, uh, you know, un unescapable, you know, physical conditions, but poverty is often a major contributing factor as to why this gets pushed on people.
you know, unhoused oh, wait, people. So you, so who you have... agree with? So, uh, so Dr. K, you do agree with me that the government is sometimes pushing it on people uh, almost inappropriately. Sure, I, I mean, I, yeah. Ha ha, Prime. Dr. K agrees with me, not you. <laughs> That's I not mean, a ringing endorsement. I, mean, I think Dr. We, K we is do, re- observing that there could gentlemen, be that gentlemen. risk. So we can we can do funny laughs about this, but this is people's lives we're talking about here. Yeah, so let's true. let's not make this into a fucking joke, can we? Thank you. Yeah. You're the one who did it, Island. So come on. Okay. Well, I'm no, because Prime was just like when I was bringing up this uh this problem, mm-hmm. he, Prime was like vehemently denying it, even though I put a source to saying that this was a problem. Yeah. What? No, you huh, not stop it. Literally stop it. Stop because what? you keep yeah, because you keep. I'm not gonna let you get away with it. Keep trying. I'm not gonna let you get away with it. You specifically said that Canada. Uh, was not providing uh, these services and saying, well, uh, you know what, instead, why don't you just die? Instead, the ser- what you uh, gave me, the service, uh, the um, references you provided me, specifically said, hey, they're just providing this as an option when it's medically relevant. When, uh, hey, like, among your, your list of options, hey, we, we also provide medically, uh, um, instead of suicide, not refusing care. So don't try it with me. Like, don't, don't fuck with me, man. Like, I'm not gonna let that happen. Like you think I'm new to this? I'm not fucking new. I've been doing this for a long goddamn time. Listen, in the sources, like the veterans are complaining that they were going to the veteran agency for something, and then they were unsolicited, you know, like unprovoked. They Which is a different offered, fucking like, argument. Don't try it with me. Once again, I'm too good at this. <laughs> okay, I guess we have a disagreement on what. Okay. Yes, on the on on your words and what they mean. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you must have interpreted it a little bit differently than what I meant, but okay. Is that like the equivalent of, I'm sorry you feel that way? I mean, more or less. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I always get put into a bit of a dour mood when, like, necrotic politics, you know, enters the fray. And, like, you know, I don't know. There, there's sort of been this, this new wave of uh, stuff like, you know, when, when people get blasted to death in Ukraine and people make these funny dunking memes about it and stuff like that and, like, milking, you know, people's actual, like, lives and deaths into content, it's just something that, that sort of puts me in a bit of a, a dour mood, you know how it is? Yeah. So, no, sorry if I'm a bit of a, a downer when it comes to this conversation. Oh, could you, would you That's mind, so uh, if you can, sorry, I just have a quick question to him. Uh, would you mind saying... Uh, like uh, you're expressing your this idea that you value life. Do you have a sure. uh, uh, do you have a source for that? Uh, sort of not a, like a source as a research paper. I'm talking about like uh, do you have a reason why you value life, or is it like personal preference, or there's something more? What are you talking to me, partner? Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh... I'm sort of I asked that to the entire panel uh, because we answered. Mm-hmm. I can sort of answer um, is like I'm. Uh, I do have faith in God uh, that guides my morals. So uh, and sort of, I, I'm interested in what where other people are coming. So from. brother, um, I'm I'm also uh, a religious person. Um, I I was raised Lutheran, uh, but uh, I converted to Catholicism uh, around the time I was uh, uh, in my late twenties. But it's not faith in God. That, from which I derive sort of my my uh, value on life, right? It's more uh, my own experiences with uh, with suicidality and sort of the idea that it is a a once in a universe existing experience, right? For the bundle of atoms that composes you, and that I think that it's sort of a waste to uh give it up prematurely essentially you know you've got all the time in the universe to be dead uh let, let's let's do the living thing right now okay that is good to hear that you're pro-life now what fuck you <laughs> fuck you go fuck yourself don't even put those those fucking words in my mouth i mean that's exactly what you just said but we can move on <laughs> hey hey if no, you want to no, tease fucking- him 
No, you fucking you put those him, words in my mouth. You're gonna fucking catch hands if we ever meet. Like, don't fucking listen, put those listen. in my mouth, bro. You can tease Wait, him, but you, but you have to answer the question now. Lifetime existence. Because like, he he that. gave an answer. Now we, I, I want to hear your answer if possible. Because we're talking about this and people are valuing life on this panel. They should they should probably substantiate. You know, why do they value life to some extent if they can? Well, I will. Well, I personally believe. Uh, not only in God, but in my country, because, you know, in our founding documents, we affirm that all men are created equal and endowed by our creators, certain inalienable rights. Um, and so w one of them is being life, uh, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And I don't think you can do that if the government is killing you. I mean, derive, but, um, derive your morals from yourself, not from a piece of paper, dude. Well, I also I also derive it from God because I think you know we all come from God, so you know, we were all made in God's image. So I again, don't think I, I do believe in God, but you got to think for yourself. You can't you can't just expect yeah, G, G man That's to do all the thinking for you. You got to put well, in some yeah, intellectual legwork. But but it is part of ourselves. Listen, legwork. It says my more. You know, I did the legwork, and I said throughout my you know. 20 plus years of living i've i've experienced so much things that if i had died beforehand i wouldn't have been able to experience and so i really value my life and the life of the people around me and i and i uh, export that to you know humanity in general because you know we're all made in the image of god and so i believe that yeah actually no one should be like killed willy-nilly by the government but i i encourage and th this is something I, I try to knock into the head of every other Christian I talk to, right, is fucking justify your beliefs beyond that of God, right? Have an actual axiom that motivates that belief beyond what the book tells you, right? The book is good. It's got good lessons in there. But don't let it be the only thing that fucking puts thoughts in your brain when it comes to why you believe the philosophical things that you do. Derive them like from did somewhere that by in, the your, in your chest. No, yeah, no, I did. Yeah, you can cite many things. No, no, don't, don't okay. let any authority be what derives it from, right? Fucking come at it from your own chest. It's not an authority. Yeah, but, that's, 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 but, but that's exactly what I you're not by... supposed to do when it comes to Christianity. Yeah, but, but, you're not supposed to come into your own reasoning. My, 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 uh, my affiliation no, with my no, country no, no. and my affiliation with my God. And so, so you and know, those three experience. things together mm -hmm. you know build my view of being pro-life in that way because you know all, right. I, my all, I'm, all I'm saying is, brother all i'm saying is read really some simple. philosophy outside of the two and and really try to justify it without using either of those two lines yeah but what, no, it's, what it's not, is, it's i think not as just a christian a, that's that's what you're not supposed to do do it, do it without appealing a, to the authority on. No, but what, what i'm saying is this is the same argument i hear from people who, like nowadays we're talking about the promiscuous sex thing well, what's the harm? Like, well, why is it so bad? Why is it a sin? Because from my own beliefs, I'm just having brother, sex brother, with Brother, why did God give me a and fucking thinking brain happening. if he didn't but, want okay. me to fucking philosophize? <laughs> if he didn't want me to fucking because philosophize, he, says, he would have made me a robot. Because he says trust in his ways with all your heart. He says trust in yes, his ways the, with all your heart. Not the ways that do, you decide on your own. It's like a think different approach to tone policing right now. You didn't consult the correct sources. <laughs> no, no, but uh, but it's uh, it's interesting. Um, you you are to use your own reason. So let's reason about this. Uh, sure. When some some people when some people say that they are uh, invoking God, uh, that mm -hmm. might be a very simple invocation of an authority, right? Mm -hmm. Which but there could be another uh, sort of view, more complex one, where uh, you recognize that uh, that when you, that you are also not an authority, so you have limits. And um, yeah. when you try to analyze something just on your own, based on, I don't know, your own limited education, your own limited exposure to life and, and what your family taught you, that is limited. Whereas when you consult some kind of a tradition that has thousands of years of history, that absorbed other successful strategies, and that have all been sort of flowing into some direction, where certain things were added possibly for nefarious reasons, but other things definitely survived there. Well, that's uh, because, exactly because it, Because they're right? good, um, and, the, the and writer, this brings you, this conception Kashmir, of good is Kashmir, not arbitrary, the, and it's not the, authoritarian, where it's more like culturally faith, evolved. The it's a cultural evolution were, that, that were you're men. tapping into. Right? Uh, Tunichip, are you raising your hand? I'm not sure if you're raising your hand. Yeah, yeah, I am. So I think Aiko. one thing that's kind of missing here, 
and maybe this is like the apt way to look at this, is he's not saying don't look towards traditions of thought. He's saying actually dive into them critically and and learn from them. You don't exactly you don't and be critical blindly. when you read them, right? Don't just spit them right back Who out. Are we shaming here? Let's move on. No, good. Can yeah, you uh, tune a chip? Can is, you volunteer your tradition of thought by which you value things? Uh, yeah. I so like okay. If the question, why do I value my life and why do I value the lives of others? I value my life because I like being alive. I enjoy the experience of life. Simple as that. Will to life. Um, other people's lives, I enjoy their presence in my life, and then I also enjoy. Um, and believe in this like rational explanation behind the idea that agency makes things justified. Agency is what brings things justification because it motivates labor. The labor allows the things to stay inside of that pattern. It's the core. If you don't have a will to live, in my opinion, you're going to die one way or another. I care about those lives, but I mostly care about life in its vital sense, not the mere existence of life, but the fact that there is will to life inside of that life. Uh, Iko? Oh, Iko, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to like give a similar answer, uh, but this is also, uh, I just dropped in chat and also in VC chat, um, uh, uh, a papal letter from 1996. It's John Paul II. It's, uh, uh, it's a document called Truth Cannot Contradict Truth. And in it, he argues that the truth of revelation get, arrives you at a particular answer, but that it, uh, you, can't, you, you don't have to just take uh, the word of Scripture for it. You can arrive at those, you should be able to arrive at those same truths through secular reasoning, through reasoning alone. And that those two different ways of getting to the same answer, it's sort of like when you check your math by using like a different method of math to arrive at the same answer. And so this is um, this is just. Did someone stop uh, scrolling their mouse? Uh, <clears throat> one of the others beat themselves. Uh, I think it's uh, Dr. K. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah. So my point is that yeah, the, the truth has a way of being uh, leading you into a particular direction and giving you a definite answer, and so you should be able to arrive at that through many different uh, methodologies. And so the church itself also believes that its truths like um, should be testable through uh, through secular reasoning. Wait, but tr what about the scripture that says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart." And lean not to your own understanding. Well, he wouldn't say that that logic is only one's own understanding, right? Like two plus two isn't four because I choose to believe it. Uh, but two plus two plus equals four isn't something that I got out of the Bible. Like it's it's something that's outside of myself, but is another way of arriving at truth. Yeah, but what I'm saying, it seems like you're saying that all. I, I don't see how. The Bible, with all its spiritual concepts and uh -huh. uh, justifications that re rely on spirituality, how a secular person would be able to arrive at those same conclusions without having that spiritual Well, through the natural world, observations of the natural world, you'll be able to um, just observe it naturally, even if you're not necessarily but you can't a religious person. But you can't you'll observe the, the spiritual you'll... world. From the secular point of view. Yeah, but you'll like, you'll observe the effects that spiritual has on the physical reality. God, my fellow Christians piss me off. It's yeah, mm -hmm. this is a weird. You can relax weird. though. It's if fine. you believe that if you believe that there's a substantive quality to the word of God, then you have to believe in some sort of like a priori knowledge. A priori knowledge is also present, just like the type that Ico talked about, and experiential knowledge, like conforms to it that's the reason that we can believe in these things they they that's where reason comes from yeah, reason is what allows you to read the bible and believe in the idea of a of a of a of, a, of a, an act of faith so like the idea that you're actually extracting it entirely you would need reason to even understand the concept of investing faith in these things no one just has that before before consulting reason although it does start with a fundamental faith uh, uh, Aiko, you wanted to mention mathematics again, but be very careful. You should just say logic to be very, very, very precise, because it's the logic that makes, um, like, the especially fundamental rules of logic 
uh, like the law of identity uh, and the principle of non-contradiction that allows you to have like equations. Uh, equations themselves are sort of like math is a little bit, um, is actually considered constructed by many people these days. Um, the specifically yeah, two plus two it? equals four. Well, uh, look into Wolfram's research to figure that out. The, the part of math that's the most solid is the actual part that's pure logic. The reason why two plus two equals four is because of, laws of identity not allowing you any other outcome unless you change what the equation means entirely but um yeah but, my, my but, point but, was much more simple than that which is to say that math exists in the world of theory it's not a material thing and yes. so you one might you know so it it sound it sounded as if the assumption was that if you're secular you're only thinking materially but in fact, you can think in the world of theory as a, somebody who's secular every bit as much as somebody who who considers himself spiritual. Like these are yeah, both... but the world. Yeah, ahead. but I I don't think the world of theory. I wouldn't put that in the same realm as the spiritual uh, world of the Bible. You should. I, I think that there there are many times in the oh. Bible when it says that the the truths that I reveal to you as a Christian that the world won't understand these things and you, they can't understand these things because. It takes the connection with don't have me the theory yet. to come to these truths. So to say that all truths are able to be arrived at from both the well, secular the claim, side and the Christian side, I, I don't think that makes any sense. The claim John Paul makes is that um, that that truth can that it cannot contradict truth, right? Which is that principle of non-contradiction that uh, Casimir is talking about. Uh, that is to say that if you Augustine said the same thing. Augustine, uh, in his uh, critique of uh, interpretations of Genesis of, in his day, said that if we know that so, if we know something about the world, like about the material world, that contradicts um, or appears to contradict what's in Genesis, then it is our interpretation of Genesis that has to change, not the science. And so, um, although he wouldn't say science because that word didn't mean that back then, but philosophy is what he would say. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Uh, it was sort of material philosophers. So um, uh, the the point being that uh, he, he understood then that we can interpret scriptures in ways that contradict what we know to be true in the world. Because at that point, we were becoming fundamentalists. At that point, we're sort of uh, 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 creating this new world for scripture that's sort of divorced from the world that we live in and that we know. And so I think one of the reasons John Paul makes this claim in Truth Cannot Contradict Truth is that he wants to uh, because he's also, for instance, the person who apologized for what happened with Galileo, because we were we were enforcing scripture over science at that point. Um, and and that story is bunk, Ikovich. Well, he it's, does he does no, make no, an apology. Uh, he made an apology unnecessarily because of the uh, the sort of cultural noise that occurred around um, Galileo. Oh, you the know Galileo, better than the Pope Galileo was. Now. <laughs> oh yeah, Galileo was treated extremely well by the church. That's one of the. F that's a trope. Well, it was, that, that it was a die. comfortable imprisonment, no doubt. Um, no, no, it, it was. was... A, the reason why he was in prison. With Premier Protein Powders, you can mix up your Mondays, Sundays, post runs, and just for fun. With 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar, these powders can make every goal feel deliciously within reach. Premier Protein, sweeten the journey. And instead of executed was because he was a, the Pope was was his personal friend, but the crime that he committed at the time was. A yeah, I says offense. listen to traditional knowledge and then says no, the Pope's no. wrong. He did, he doesn't understand it the way I do. He, he no, Come he on, specifically man. in his writing uh, he directed direct insults towards the Pope, um, and those insults were like directly calling him like stupid and other bad words, which was considered like uh, the uh, blasphemy uh, and so automatically he should have been killed but instead because the pope was actually his sponsor that gave him like funds for much of his life uh, the pope said you know you're you're getting old and senile stay at this uh, vacation home um, and stay out of politics please thank yeah, you those are, I, point out a, those I, so, are quick, okay. I want to point out a quick irony here and that was dr k first trying to shame Isle for thinking uncritically Right and extolling the value of critically assessing these sources of of human value or human life, mm -hmm. and then we just heard Dr. K now 
um, hey, what's uh, up, bro? Hey, shaming Casimir here for actually engaging in critically evaluating what the Pope is saying or what other church officials are saying. So it's sort of uh, ironic. Well, yeah, I evaluate I the man clear, by his own logic. I just want to make it clear I don't disagree with a, a lot of what Casimir says here, except there's one very critical detail, which is Galileo was still required at trial to say that the earth doesn't move. And I mean, that was absolutely like that. They weren't going to uh, have him just apologize for being rude or making insults. Like they, they wanted him to back off of his science and say that the, that the earth, like to them, uh, script, uh, the evidence from scripture was that it believed that the earth was at the center and it does not move. And the fact that he was finding scientific um uh, like facts that prove that that wasn't the case. That was the crux of the issue. So like how, whether or not they, they, you know, Galileo wasn't capable of being an asshole, like, like a, like a, a lot of geniuses are, or that he, uh, 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 that a lot of the things that provoked the church were unwise, uh, on his part. I agree with all of that, but, um, it, he was still required at trial, uh, to revoke uh, his scientific uh, findings. So, as as he should have, uh, because uh, it's uh, politics, uh, baby. And okay. and the well, politics was politics? were is that sure. there, there were a lot of people around his contemporaries, people uh, that were Catholic and 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 uh, and deeply religious, who were talking about the Earth not being in the center, who were sending letters to each other, who preceded him and gave him a lot of the the research that he then. Uh, put together within his theory, so he was within a group that was largely okay, religious. Okay, sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're getting we're getting lost here. Um, uh, that wasn't uh, anyone, and no one else can engage with this. So I want to oh, like. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh no, no, no problem. And it's interesting because I hadn't heard part of that story can, about Galileo. Can I um can I switch back to uh just an earlier point? One one earlier. Um, when you say, um, don't you recognize there's at least uh, one miracle in uh, in all of this, which is, uh, you know, if you're a scientist, you know that there's at least one miracle you will likely not be able to explain. Miracle, the most like literal sense, unexplainable by science, which is the formation of the universe. Anything that happens beyond the initial point, you, you're incapable of finding out ever. Um, so that's at least one limit on your knowledge. Um, then there is a second limit I can come up with, which is the rules of logic themselves. Like, yes, they self-prove by the impossibility of this proof, but it's not a real proof. It's like you take that first step on faith to even have reason, as Tuna Chip said. You, ha you need to have logic for reason, but you need to have faith for logic. It's sort of ironic. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I... I just think that if... If I just relied on what I can prove scientifically, I would run into things like like Jesus, like raising someone from the dead. If I look at all the medical science, all the scientific principles, all the forces, I don't see anything in the scientific realm that says another human being should be able to raise another person from the dead. So if I just relied on science, I can't get to that what I consider a truth that Jesus was able to do these type of things. So I, I fully rely on science, and yet I still believe all of this. I'm sorry your faith is so weak, my friend. Maybe you should talk to I your pastor about so it. So obviously you didn't hear what I said, because I said I think it is a truth. I said I can't get to that truth by just using science. So you should probably listen. Oh, I can with science, for sure. Fully believe that there's somewhere something in science that proves it's possible. What? I don't know. We haven't figured it out yet. Are, are you aware <laughs> of the... How can we bring it back to uh, to euthanasia? I don't know if Prime wants to, but maybe you can engage with this one. Are you aware that there's just things that you that are outside of the bubble of provable things, like including just empirical like problems in calculation that are um, potentially unsolvable, proven to be unsolvable in some cases, or things like aesthetics, like the concept, conception of beauty? You know, there's lots of argument over whether uh, you can universalize some form of beauty or not, but all of that stuff is like way beyond science, and yet it's there daily. Like it, it you're using it. I think it's beyond science you... currently. Well, I think I we think don't that, know I, what we I, don't know, right? So there are things that are outside of the bubble of what is known, but to say that there are things that are outside of the bubble of that which is knowable, it is in and of itself an 
unanswerable question in a lot of ways, right? Because it's those, uh, what is it, Rumsfeld that talks about the known knowns and the yeah, unknown, unknown unknowns. Unknown. And, yeah, all the, this is one of the unknown unknowns, right? I mean, I know you said that some things were proven to be unknow- unsolvable, but, um, uh, you know, I, that's above my pay, pay grade. But uh, it, I guess to me, it's un- it's an unknown unknown because I don't understand the ways in which those things were proven. Uh, so, uh, uh, Pep, did you want to say something? Sorry, no, my kitten just attacked me. One second. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm interested in getting back to the medically assisted suicide thing. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we had some disagreements. I would be, ooh, wait, there you are. Uh, Kaz, I... I'm a little I'm a little confused because uh, somebody at some point said that me and you would probably agree, but there's a there's a pretty fundamental disagreement, and I want to figure out why that is. So, why um, why do you think that the state offering or being able to offer assisted suicide is bad? Is it because that means that people who are being taxed is it because of the nature of the taxation that that means that people are forced to believe in the values of the state? So the state should do as little as possible that is objectionable to the values of the populace. I'm trying to get a good understanding of, of your position on sort of like a minarchist approach towards that. Well, um, the, the one of the problems is that when we're dealing with both Canada and the United States is that we're it seems to be that we're arguing on like a federal level. So that would be the objection number one. If this is uh, somehow something that people spend money on as a community, it should be as local as possible as the first principle. And it's not. If it's being talked about in the context of rights, rights are like, that's like the, the bill of rights. That's what we mean by rights, right? So uh, so first of all, if you, um, and like, I do agree with you that the person should have full control over their body. I'm probably even more extreme and radical about that than you, because I believe that taxation equals slavery directly, unless it's entirely local and voluntary. So that's the no, thing. I, I, mean, I agree with you there. I'm, I'm on the same page as you there. I'm so, anti So, so why, why am I against like the, the Fed or like any, or, or even in local governments still pose a certain risk? The risk is that, um, uh, is that basically uh, think of a description of the most evil and dominant corporation on the market, potentially, like like an Uber Amazon. And if you start uh, writing down its qualia, its qualities, and comparing them to the federal or even local government, you will just find equal signs throughout. They're the same. Now, you might say, well, one has a constitution and the other one doesn't. Um, the but if you look at governments at states worldwide, they all have beautiful constitutions. But the United States is among the few that actually like hardcore enforces it, and it enforces it because people are armed, active, very angry, and very dangerous. I truly believe that because in Russia, federal uh, for the Russian Federation, there's a beautiful constitution with say the right to protest in the street. But do they actually care about that right? No, because people can protest for you know weeks, and the police comes in with sticks and beats them, even if it's unconstitutional, and there's no enforcement, and people are disarmed, and so it, it it's like doesn't happen. So, so, um, so okay, that's yeah. the, the, there's a so there's a principle of danger there. Do you recognize that danger at least? I I actually disagree on wh- why the Constitution gets held. So I, I tend to uh, like agree with Arendt on this, that the reason that the Constitution gets held so strictly in America is because it is sort of the formant identifying quality of America, where other people's uh, nations have a national identity that is tied to an ethnicity or a faith or some kind of core thing. The founding of America was about like a creation of agreeable difference unified under this like binding document. So the history of the constitution and the reason that it's like so rigidly held onto is because it is essentially the identity of America in a way that can't really be replaced other than circumventing America with such a radically different uh, ideology or or identity that people tend to see it as this uh, encroaching factor, whether or not that's socialism or fascism or whatever, to replace the Constitution, 
uh, is to replace like the core identity of America. So that's the reason I think that we hold on to it so strongly. It's not about guns in the street. It's not about the threat. It's about the existential threat of losing the identity as the individual. We, we sort of like put ourselves into the government and our faith into it because we find a vested interest in our understanding of self in that document. So that's my well, belief. Which, why the which is a long way of saying individual liberty, which is the central crux of the American founding, right? Sure. And so to to replace our national identity would be to, at its very core, threaten individual liberty. This is why we grasp so hard onto the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. It, it, it's not, I mean, it's not for some philosophical thing, um, but I do agree with you. It is something that is fundamentally different than ethnicity or state religion, um, or some other combination of characteristics we see across Europe, Africa, or elsewhere. But it fulfills the same, uh, I'm willing, fulfills the same unification. I'm method. willing to concede sure. that. I think there's a unifying point here. I think you're right. It's sort of like a civil uh, faith in the United States uh, of in individualism and the Constitution that's different from other places. Um, and I think it's a combination of that faith, but that faith actually materializes. It materializes... Um, in the like the Battle of Athens in the in the 40s, where and and in uh, people, for example, protesting in Virginia and just telling the government, no, we're going to like disassociate from you very quickly if you cross this particular line of this particular amendment. So there is there's always a tension where people don't just believe on it, but they're willing to step out into the street and to protest in the most um, you know highest extent possible threaten the highest things they can threaten um, to reinforce those beliefs that you that you've pointed to now however the history of the united states is actually a continuous um, combination of liberalizing like spreading the the liberty towards all individuals expanding the groups that are that liberty is applicable to at the same time where the central government is encroaching on their collective rights so for example um uh, all of our founding fathers were against central banking systems, and yet the state used central banking systems in U.S. history from the moment of its inception, from Hamilton and from others, in attempts to fund wars, from the, the Civil War uh, to eventually World War I. Right before World War I, we have another central bank created, and right at the start of World War I, we have conscription implemented, and we still have it, so we still have like any one of us can be legally conscripted into the military, that was unheard of during the time of the revolution. The, the entire revolutionary army was supposed to be because people really believed in freedom um, and, the, and like uh, enough of them chose to fight uh, the British, not the majority actually, but the large enough mi minority decided to fight. And nobody was, uh, as far as I understand, conscripted into that army. It was voluntary force. So that's... If you look at that history, and if you look at like all the amount of lies that we've been told, um, and over the last year we've, that we've discovered, over the last decade, you know, I'm uh, less optimistic than you because, uh, partially maybe because I was born in a society um, where people are not passionate about their freedom, and I can see ourselves gradually slide there over time as less and less and less people protest. So I don't want the idea. I'm all, I was always hang up on the idea of like death penalty and other final things the government can do uh, because I don't want the government to be associated with them in any way. Like, right, because you see the potential for government overreach, for systemic government oppression of the people using state monopolized violence as its tool, as its mechanism of doing so, right? It's the especially... Of death Yes, this is especially dangerous when the state can do it uh, in a compassionate manner. We can say, well, <laughs> you know, this dissident, <laughs> this dissident was suffering in prison, and we've, uh, you know, we've uh, euthanized him. Uh, it's funny that even in like um, uh, in the Russian Federation, people are so afraid of their government that even though Putin is in power, uh, he's not implementing the death penalty or or. Maybe he did it very, very recently. I'm not sure what, what it is right now. But it used to be for the first maybe 12 years of his reign uh, where he was actually against the death penalty because the public was not willing to trust the state with, with that um, responsibility. They trusted him a lot, but not enough for that. We should sort of maybe 
look at that as a lesson. I don't think that the death penalty is the same thing fundamentally as wanting to end your own life and asking for assistance in it. Like we know that there's a fundamental difference there, right? Somebody's in a prison as opposed to life. Now you could say sometimes people feel that way, but then there's the other, like on the other end, which is that one is willing and one isn't. One asks for it and one is forced into it. So when we're saying that the death penalty is something that creates these big issues, it's because it's like the revoking of the right to life towards people due to a certain level of criminality that like breaks trust with the government. But like, if you let people who don't want to live anymore for whatever reason, get government assisted suicide, I don't think that they're looking at that, like regular people are going to look at that and think, oh my God, they're killing people. They're going to say, or rather, they shouldn't be saying murder. You can say killing. Killing, that's factually accurate, right? But the whole point on this is that the government is not enforcing an action onto somebody. They're taking the will that is already present in those people, and they're enabling it because they are an extension of that will. The government is in a contract with the people that you're aware of. The reason that the government has this power, theoretically, is because the people are submitting that power under a certain set of like agreements. One of them is that you're going to do what we want. You know, that's the sort of demos uh, going on here. And if uh, if that's going to happen on like the group level, which is what we have currently, it's always supposed to, as you have these bigger groups, not be trampling on the fundamental core of the smaller group inside. Now, if we're going to say inside of a community, 50 people say, it's not okay for the doctor to help somebody end their life. And the one person is in the middle. I'm seeing a federation within the federation. I'm seeing a community where there is one person acting as a state unto themselves that is then being forced by that community to not be able to end their life. If there's a doctor and a patient and they can find each other, it should be okay. Do I think it's moral? That's its own separate question as as Aiku has presented. And I don't think that that's an interesting question because I don't really care uh, to project my moral beliefs into the state. I'm mostly trying to figure out how can we make a state that actually promotes everybody's individual liberty inside of these larger brackets without forcing it on anybody else. Every government arrangement is supposed to try and do the, the least uh, necessary to undo the fundamental contradictions of cohabitation inside of a space. I think Listen, that's here's, just let doctors do it. And well, I let don't believe that that's, not, the, don't I don't do think that's feasible. I don't think that's feasible because there's obviously limits that, you know, whether or not there's one person in uh, a person in authority and one person in the community who find each other who want to do something. If, you know, if the community has has, you know, for whatever reason they have set forth, decided that it's against the, the rules, then it shouldn't be. Like, you know, like, you know, we wouldn't have that same exact uh, rigmarole that you did about child marriages. Like, oh my gosh, there's just one person. 50 Thank people you. are surrounding this one person who says, I want to marry a child. But, you know, well, you know, if they find a religious person that wants to marry them with that child, and, you know, that should be none of the state's or community's business, because, you know, that's a single individual. It's not whatever. analogous, my man. It's it's not really analogous. There's a, there's there's a yeah, lot of sorry. One. No, a child marriage doesn't involve person. just the, the 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 suitor and the and the child. It also involves. Well, but if an adult finds the child, the child is not a self sustaining. If, if a doctor if finds a patient. Finds a no, no, no! Yeah, please, so let's let's stick child. to the analogy. Uh, listen, yeah, th- there's a problem here. Is just the finality. One, one, one second, one second, one second, one second. Um, first of all, uh, Pep, did you want to say something? Uh, I was just agreeing that I don't think it's analogous. I think that the scope of each one of those things is very different. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you um, and 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 I've been doing oh, this for eight hours. <laughs> doing this for eight hours. So uh, uh, that'll be it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for coming through. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, I'm gonna send you all. Uh, we'll we'll be back. Um, of course. But I'll, I'll send you off to our friend, uh, Freems, who's uh doing a thing, right? Um, so. Uh, Check him out. I like him. Freem's a good guy. Um, and uh, I haven't made him in a long time. So anyway, uh, I'll be back in the future. Um, so come back then. I'm just uh, 